the Honorable Vice Governor of Bali Province, Professor Dr. Insinyur Cokorda Oke Arta Ardana Sukawati, MSI, your Honorable Rector of Warmadewa University, today which is presented by Vice Rector of Academic Aware. Your Honorable Directress and Secretary of Postgraduate Program of Warmadewa University. Your Honorable Deans of Warmadewa University. Your Honorable All Invited Speakers. Your Honorable Dr. Imadis Suniasta Amarta, Lecturer of Postgraduate Program of Warmadewa University as moderator of this international seminar. And all participants of this international seminar, ladies and gentlemen. In the following, we mention the rundown of this seminar. First opening by MC, and then second singing the national anthem of Indonesia Raya. Welcome speech by Rector of Warmadewa University and will open the international seminar officially. Third presentation by the invited speakers and discussion, ecotourism development as an alternative tourism in new era of pandemic COVID-19, which be led by the moderator. And lastly, closing of the seminar. Ladies and gentlemen, our second agenda, singing the national anthem of Indonesia Raya. Ladies and gentlemen, now our next agenda is welcome speech by Rector of Warmadewa University and will also open this international seminar officially. Vice Rector of Academic Affair, Insinyur Inyoman Kaca MSE, time is yours. Before my dialect, my speech, I would like to inform you that of Rector Warmadewa University cannot join this conference as of another agenda that has been scheduled earlier. However, he appreciates this agenda very much as he understands that tourism, tourism is one of the important sectors in Indonesia, especially in Bali. And 
and an alternative solution should be raised to mine the gold that has been achieved and uh, transformed to something better in terms of the tourism industry. A such honor and the great pleasure to meet welcome to Warmadeva University virtually to conduct the international conference ecotourism development as an alternative tourism in the new normal during COVID-19 pandemic. Your Honorable keynote speaks, Professor Dr. Insinyur Chooko Ardano Sukwati, Vice Governor of Bali. Your Honorable All Speaker, Professor Dr. Tony Hendra Tono from City Pram, Yogyakarta. Sakar Al Bay Basar from Al Baka Applied University Asal Jordan. Dr. Muhammad Asrib Hasim, University Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And Dr. Ana Agung Gedeok Rako, MSc from Warmadewa University. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, Om Swastiastu. Ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's well known that COVID-19 pandemic has led to change in the world tourism net, where health, hygiene, safety, and security issues have been the main consideration for tourists who want to travel. Nowadays, people also pay attention to alternative tourism that could up to ideal tourism model that's in ecotourism. Ecotourism covers this three point, local empowerment by employing local people, conservation by protecting wild flora and fauna, and also education by loving and caring ecosystem. It must be a great solution as this which they win for all and could be implemented in any country. Ladies and gentlemen, COVID-19 pandemic is teaching us that we take nature and progress it and we need to realize value before we lose it. Nature can be not recreated when it's gone with. We need to take action and to talk this campaign. I do really, I hope that we could solve our drug perspective experiment related to ecotourism as alternative model. Last but not least, it, I would like thank to all speaker, participants, and also committee this program. I will you successful and alighting conference. Thank you. Om Santi Santi Santi. My peace be upon us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Insinyur Nyoman Kaca. Ladies and gentlemen, now let's come to our main agenda today. Presentation and discussion session on ecotourism development as an alternative tourism in new era of pandemic COVID-19. Dr. Imadi Sunyasta Amrata as moderator, time is yours. Well, thank you very much. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm Arik Suniyashta Amrata, as you moderator today. Um, first of all, let's pray to the God Almighty, because you develop that because of his blessing, we could get together today, even we meet virtually. Um, in this international seminar, in terms of tourism development as an alternative tourism 
Emmanuel Pan Republic, 19, today, June the 6th, 2021. Om Swastiastu. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam nama budaya. Good morning to all of you. My God, Almighty bless all of us. The Honorable Professor Doctor Richard Dr. Tardana Skowati, the Vice Governor of Bali <coughs> Province, and today as the keynote speaker, Your Honorable Director of Bali University. Today is represented by the Vice Director of Academy Affairs, Directorate of Postgraduate Program, and Secretary. The Dean of Armada University, all the lecturers at the postgraduate program of Armada University, and the distinguished guest today, the speaker, Associate Professor Dr. Tony Hinda Tono, uh, Saket AI Alba Sia, PhD, Dr. Muhammad As. Aslab Asim and Dr. Ana Agung Gede Rakan as also as uh, the host speaker in this uh, international seminar. And also I'd like to greet the head department, the secretary, lecturer, student, and all the participants who are joining this international seminar today. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has brought down economy of almost all country in the world, of course, including Indonesia. Indonesia has been trying to recover its economic development. One of, of the, the reports is through reopening the tourism sector and related with the theme of this seminar. However, the hope of economic recovery drew particularly in ecotourism is not an illusion. According to the and Bollard's investigation, when the economic downturn in the 2007 and 2008 period hit European countries, it turned out that ecotourism was able to support economic growth by supporting job creation and increasing tax revenues. Recently, Indonesia has set a strategy for aligning the core of tourism and the creative economy. This idea is very good. Only in the context of ecotourism, it needs improvement where foreign exchange profits are not only direction, it is necessary to think about sustainability and involve local communities. And we are looking with the theme of our seminar today about ecotourism development as defined by the International Ecotourism Society. Ecotourism is responsible travel to natural areas that conserve the environment, sustains the well-being of the local people, and involves interpretation and education. At least from this definition, we get three keywords. They are conservation, education, and community empowerment. And again today, by conducting this international seminar, we try to get some goal, such as providing an understanding the concept and theories of ecotourism development as alternative tourism. Uh, second one, identifying the strategy for developing ecotourism and economic recovery as a result of uh, the COVID-19 uh, impact. This is including ecotourism development as tourism, implementation of government policies in ecotourism development, 
the potential of ecotourism development and strategic management of ecotourism during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And uh, today, ladies and gentlemen, we are actually we have um, 80 minutes uh, for the presentation by the speaker, another 45 minutes for the discussion. But people, we go to the presentation uh, and discussion session. Uh, first of all, I'd like to invite the keynote speaker today. Um, he is Professor Dr. Insinyur Chok Oka Arta Arda Naskawati. He was born in Ubud, Yanyar, Regency, August 23rd, 1956, and he lives in Puri Saren, Ubud, Yanyar. His educational background, uh, bachelor degree, Department of Architecture, Faculty of Engineering, Woodyan University. Master degree, he was graduated from Master Program in Cultural Studies, Faculty of Letters, Woodyan University. And he was finished a doctoral program also in Cultural Studies, Faculty of Letters, Woodyan University. And he got his professor of design science, traditional architects and Balinese culture. And now he, he is the vice governor of Bali province. And well, he has a lot of experience, of course. And yeah, I'd like to read some of, of his original history and the tradition he got so far. Um, the British chairman of the Bali Heritage Trust uh, from 2003 until now, member of the Indonesian Moral Reconciliation Movement Forum from 2003 until now, Indonesian Tourism Society at Fishery uh, from 2005 until now, Chairman of the Hotel and Restaurant Association, Bali Province, from 2005 until now. Chairman of Bali Bhakti Negara Martial's Arts, from 2005 until now. Advisor Board of Bali Tourism Board, from 2016 until period of 2021. Uh, head of the Graduate Alumni Association of University of Armadewa from 2010 until now, and he also Honorary Consul of Malaysia to the, 2017 until 2018. Um, well, some of the that he got uh, three Hitatarana Awards 2008, a Paul Terrace Pillow Award from Rotary International in 2008. One certificate as the best district or city youth organization advisor at the national level in 2010. Leadership of MDGs, MDGs, World 2010 Million Development Goals uh, 2011. And the Brown Beach Satya Award in 2011. And also uh, Regional Government Performance Assessment Award in the public. The sec work sector uh, in uh, 2011. It is gentlemen uh, that was at play at plan to be uh, our keynote speaker today. And ladies and gentlemen, um, well, we do apologize that last in the last minute because of uh, the in charge the vice governor. Of Bali, and he has very tight schedule. And then last minute, he said sorry for not able to joining us virtually. But he had as prepare a presentation uh, to all of you. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is the presentation by our keynote. Speaker today, Professor Dr. Insur Chok of the Arta Ardana Stowati, Vice Governor 
of Bali province. Okay, please enjoy his presentation. Thank you. Um Swastiastu, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Salam, nama budaya, rahayu, 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 dan salam sehat. Bapak Rektor Universitas Forma Dewa yang saya hormati, demikian juga Direktur Program Pasca Sarjana Universitas Forma Dewa yang saya hormati tentu bersama jajaran, para dosen, para penitia, penyelenggara, dan khususnya para peserta seminar yang berbahagia dan juga saya hormati. Mengawali sambut saya terlebih dahulu, marilah kita tidak henti-hentinya memanjatkan puja dan puji syukur hadapan Tuhan Yang Maha Esa, ide sayang diwasa, bawaannya atas asung kertawar nugrahnya, atas rahmatnya, kita bisa berkumpul pada pagi hari ini dalam keadaan sehat walafiat untuk bersama-sama mengikuti satu acara yang sangat penting bagi saya, yaitu seminar internasional dengan tema pengembangan peri ekowisata sebagai perusahaan alternatif pada era new normal di masa pandemi COVID-19 yang diselenggarakan oleh Universitas Wapama Dewa pada hari ini, hari Sabtu, tanggal 5 Juni tahun 2021. Bapak-Ibu yang saya hormati, pertama saya mohon maaf tidak bisa langsung hadir secara offline pada acara ini karena kebetulan pada okay. jam yang sama saya ada acara yang tidak oh, bisa ya, ya. saya hindari dan ya, demikian ya. harapan saya tentu seminar ini akan berjalan dengan baik, Udah? sukses dan menghasilkan rekomendasi-rekomendasi yang bermanfaat untuk kita semua nah sebagaimana kita ketahui Bapak Ibu semua bahwa pandemi COVID-19 yang melanda Indonesia termasuk Bali sejak bulan Maret tahun 2020 telah memberikan dampak yang luar biasa, dampak yang sangat luas pada seluruh seni kehidupan masyarakat yang ada di Bali tentunya. Tidak saja kesehatan masyarakat yang terganggu, khawatir, takut, juga ekonomi, budaya bahkan tersentuh juga. Kita lihat yang biasanya ada tradisi-tradisi orang ngaben setelah jam 12 karena covid karena dapat urutan krematorium pagi, bisa akhirnya krematorium atau ngaben dilakukan jam 7 pagi, jam 8 pagi. Budaya kita mulai tersentuh. Keamanan juga mulai tersentuh. Ada berapa kejadian-kejadian, ya mungkin ada kaitannya, ada mungkin juga ini adalah satu hal yang kebetulan. Ada pertimo puro yang dimasuki oleh pencuri. Ini dampak-dampak yang saya lihat sangat luar biasa bagi kita di Bali, khususnya selama ini hidup tentram, damai, penghasilan, sejahtera, dan lain sebagainya. Namun demikian, di tengah-tengah pandemi COVID-19, tentu kita tidak bisa hanya mengeluh berdiam diri. Tantangan yang kita hadapi sekaligus kita anggap sebagai sebuah peluang. Bapak-Ibu yang saya hormati, COVID-19 mensyaratkan dan mengharuskan kita untuk memenuhi, mengikuti protokol kesehatan yang ditetapkan oleh WHO. Antara lain adalah memakai masker, maaf saya pakai selepas tadi, kemudian menjaga jarak, menghindari kerumunan, dan tentu mencuci tangan di air yang mengalir dengan sabun sesering-sering mungkin. Nah, ini anjuran WHO. Dari anjuran ini, saya menangkap ada satu pesan, dan akhirnya merubah tren gaya hidup kita semua. Untuk menghindari kerumunan, kita akhirnya menghindar dari tempat-tempat yang berpotensi membuat kita dekat semua, di ruang-ruangan, di ruang-ruangan tertutup, dan lain sebagainya. Ini satu tren atau gaya hidup yang terjadi sebagai jawaban atas pandemi COVID-19. Demikian juga adalah masalah, apa namanya, temperatur. Saya mendengar di 24 derajat Celcius, ini virus corona sudah tidak kuat lagi bertahan. Kita cenderung keluar mencari alam terbuka, berjemur di matahari agar mendapatkan suhu yang berada di atas 24 derajat Celcius. Ini satu hal yang kalau kita cermati sesungguhnya sangat banyak dan sangat besar potensi ini ada di pulau yang kita cintai, di Pulau Bali. Pariwisata Bali yang merupakan tulang punggung ekonomi Bali memberikan kontribusi PDRB Bali yang sangat luar biasa, 53 persen 
PDB Bali tergantung dari pariwisata. Tentu kita harus cermat menghitung kekuatan-kekuatan dan kelemahan kita menghadapi pandemi COVID-19. Dulu survei pernah menunjukkan bahwa ketertarikan wisatawan ke Indonesia 65% didorong oleh karena ketertarikannya pada budaya Bali. 25% karena alam Bali dan 10% karena pariwisata buatan. 25% karena alam Bali. Saya melihat ini suatu entry point yang luar biasa. Ketika sekarang upacara-upacara ngaben pernikahan yang berpotensi menimbulkan kerumunan orang, ini mulai kita hindari atau kita kurangi jumlah orangnya. Maka untuk pariwisata yang tertarik pada acara-acara budaya, tentu kita bisa arahkan pada pariwisata alam atau ekoturism. 25% modal kita sekiranya cukup besar kalau kita perdalam, kalau kita kaji lagi dan kita kemas mengikuti era kekinian. Pemerintah sudah tidak intinya terus mengembangkan teknologi digital. Berapa hari yang lalu kabar gembira bagi kita khusus di Denpasar, kita sudah menerapkan sekarang 5G di Denpasar. Artinya apa? Artinya kita bisa bekerja dari mana saja, dari pelosok gunung, dari tengah-tengah sawah, dari manapun kita bisa bekerja. Oleh sebab itu, alternatif untuk mengembangkan ekowisata bukan hal baru. Kita sudah punya potensi ini dan sudah menjadi daya tarik pariwisata. 25 persen pariwisata ke Bali karena alamnya. Oleh sebab itu, mari kita melalui seminar ini, saya harapkan akan bisa merumuskan akan bisa mengkemas ekowisata yang model apa, kira-kira yang cocok, yang sesuai, pertama untuk menjawab permasalahan COVID-19, kedua tentu mengikuti tren milenial yang terjadi sekarang. Harapan saya, sekali lagi, seminar ini memberikan rekomendasi kepada kita semua, khususnya pemerintah Provinsi Bali, untuk apa yang harus kita lakukan, apa yang perlu kita hindari. Menjawab alternatif baru pariwisata Bali, pariwisata ekotourism di Bali sebagai alternatif di pasca COVID-19. Selamat berseminar, semoga pikiran yang jernih selalu menyertai kita dan mendapatkan hasil yang baik untuk kita semua. Terima kasih, Om Santi, Santi, Santi Om. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih. Well, ladies and gentlemen, yes, that was a keynote presentation uh, by our keynote speaker, Professor Dr. Jok Okarte Andan Iskwati, the Vice Governor of Bali Province. And well, based on his presentation and some keyword that I uh, such as it is reminding um, this pandemic of COVID-19 um, still uh, with us and unpredictable when it will be finished. So it requires the very strict health protocol during this pandemic, um, at least by wearing masks or whatever you wing. Uh, they are on and doing activity outside and doing social distance and also including using your hand. And he also um, stated or gave us presented some data about the tourism development uh, in Bali, which is about 65%. The tourists interested in the culture of Bali, they come to Bali, tourists come to Bali to enjoy the culture of Bali. And 10%, the tourists looking for the created artificial tourist attraction in Bali. And fortunately, 25%, uh, it is a great number according to him, um, the tourists interested in enjoy the environment and landscape of Bali. So related with um, our spinner today, 25%, is uh, according to him is a very potential and good enough to develop 
the one of the kind of the tourism development it is ecotourism of course this is as great capital to solve the pandemic this pandemic COVID-19 and also to answer the millennial demand at the moment and hopefully by doing this manner we could uh, create a strategy uh, for developing uh, the ecotourism uh, in this pandemic and also uh, in the future for the future time of course um, all the effort is uh, done to recover the economic development uh, particularly uh, in bali ladies and gentlemen um well we have no season actually because uh, as he mentioned just now he has very important thing to do so he couldn't uh, join us directly and of course we cannot do some interaction with him and we just uh, continue we would like to continue uh, the presentation uh, session by the speaker but before uh, we continue uh, inviting uh, our speaker today um, i'd like to well greet some of the participants um, the participant today we have 209 participants wow this is must be from all over the world so um anybody from because uh we will also invite um, the participant from not only internally from Wamadewa, from Indonesia, and also from other country where the speaker come from. Um, anybody from from other country, Indonesia, of course. I would like I would like to greet first from other country. Would you please raise your hand? Any from Jordan? Any any person from Jordan? From Malaysia? From Yogyakarta? I wish. Oh yeah, I guess some. But, but uh, some of them uh, were put up the video, so we cannot see directly. But I do believe that from two hundred and ten, no, no, no increasing at the number, but two hundred and ten. Uh, some participants must be from other country. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, I believe that uh, all of the speakers are ready. Uh, Prop Tony. Good morning. Selamat pagi. Prop Tony, selamat pagi. Uh, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, hang on, uh, I'd like to... Oh yeah, for Tony Hendratono. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I try to find out where you are. Okay, Tony Hendratono. And the second one will be Dr. Rosaker. Yeah, Dr. Rosaker. And then the third speaker will be Dr. Ashraf. Yes. Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> and the fourth will be uh, Dr. Ana Agum Raka. This is the um, our speaker today. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, because of limited time we have, um, in the next 20, 20 seconds, I'd like to invite um, our first speaker today is um, Associate Professor Dr. Tony Indratuno, S-A-M-M-T-T, is lecturer of Ambarukmo uh, Tourism Institute or Stipram, Yogyakarta. Um, well, I'd like to read a little bit about um, his educational background. For the bachelor's grade, um, he was graduated from Satya Wachana University, Latiga, Faculty of Economics, and master grade. He was graduated from um, Universitas Persada Indonesia, Jakarta, taking um, management. And for his doctorate program, he was graduated from Institute of Business and Informatics of Indonesia, IBIA, also uh, for management. 
Um, now he is active as lecturer um, in some university and especially at the postgraduate program at first at uh, Prita Harapan University and Trisakti Tourism College and UVM Buddha Mulia University, including University Budi, Universitas Budi, and of course EIB. EE Institute of this is the Informatics of Indonesia and Steve Ram Ambarutma Tourism Institute in Yogyakarta and well his uh, background concern on hospitality strategic management supply chain management in tourism marketing management in tourism even events management development destination management and is uh, currently position at Stipram is the Riker Opus Graduate Program of Stipram Jakarta. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, well, now we are going directly to the presentation by speaker. So, uh, Pak Tony Hendratono, you have 30 minutes to uh, present uh, your topic. In Tata like tourism in the era of new normality, picnic without panic. Panic. This is a good, <laughs> uh, well, good, good topic, Professor. All right, uh, Professor, um, you could directly present uh, your the topic for the next 20 minutes. Time is yours. Terima uh, Doctor. Mada Amerta, selamat pagi Om Swastiastu, Bapak Ibu yang saya hormati peserta seminar internasional. Saya mohon izin terlebih dahulu untuk menggunakan backdrop dari Bali, karena Bali merupakan salah satu tujuan utama kalau saya berwisata. Ini menunjukkan bahwa I miss so much Bali. Yang terhormat Bapak Rektor dan Wakil Rektor Akademik Universitas Warmadewa, Ibu Dr. Rai Sita Laksmi, Direktur Pasar Sarjana dan Panitia Pelaksana HUT serta Sivitas Akademi Universitas Warmadewa. Warmadewa. Pertama, saya mengucapkan selamat HUT ke-9 program Pasca Sarjana Universitas Warmadewa. Semoga di usia yang ke-9 dapat lebih semakin sukses melangkah maju mewujudkan visi, misi, dan cita-cita. Ya kami hormati dan kami banggakan Bapak Profesor Dr. Insinyur Cok Oka Arta Ardana, Bapak Wakil Gubernur sebagai Wakil Gubernur Provinsi Bali, terima kasih untuk pencerahannya yang sangat luar biasa, Maktur Sokma Bapak. Yang terhormat moderator Bapak Imada Amerta, thank you for the opportunity given to me first. And I would like to ask permission from the Honorable Speaker from Jordan, Dr. Basala, uh, Dr. Muhammad Hashim from Malaysia, and Dr. Anna Agung Gederaka from Warmadewa University to deliver my presentation first. Peserta seminar yang saya hormati, dewasa ini kita menghadapi very difficult problem, especially tourism industry because of the COVID-19 pandemic. All of the world menghadapi the same problem, yaitu temporary decline in tourism industry. Saya mengatakan itu sebagai temporary decline because I believe ya yeah, that pariwisata akan kembali menjadi leading sector. But we have to solve the problem. In my opinion, and I completely agree that ecotourism is the right strategy to overcome this problem. Oleh karena itu, pemilihan tema yang tepat pada seminar internasional ini dalam upaya memulihkan kembali industri pariwisata khususnya di Indonesia. Please uh, share my presentation. Before we discussing about ecotourism di era kenormalan baru, I think it's better for us untuk mengingat kembali what is tourism. Menurut Ricci, 
There are four different perspective of tourism. Perspektif yang uh, pertama. Excuse me, sorry, pro, sorry for interrupting. Uh, Panitia, mohon dibantu uh, to share uh, pro, uh, Tony's presentation. Mohon maaf, Pak. Just moment, okay. please. Yeah. Panitia, tolong mohon dibantu untuk presentasi uh, Pak Prof. Tony. Just this moment, please. Okay. Pak Gung Rama atau Pak Esa, mohon dibantu. Bisa dari sini, bisa. Lagi di Just this moment, okay. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Yes, go on, Pak Okay. Yeah, go on. Okay. Let me continue. Yes, please. Okay, thanks. Nah, before we discussing about ecotourism di era penormalan baru, I think it's better for us untuk mengingat kembali what is tourism. Menurut Ricci, There are four different perspective of tourism. Yang pertama perspektif dari turis. Turis akan memandang pariwisata sebagai sebuah aktivitas untuk mendapatkan pengalaman yang menyenangkan atau memorable experience atau customer satisfaction. Yang kedua from the government. Government consider tourism as an activity that contribute to national development. Dan yang ketiga dari community, community atau host akan memandang pariwisata sebagai sebuah aktivitas untuk melestarikan budaya alam serta sebagai job creation. And the last one dari sisi bisnis, ya bisnis akan memandang pariwisata sebagai sebuah opportunity to make profit by supplying the goods and services for tourism. Next please. It is good too if we also need to understand what the tourism industry is. Ada tujuh sektor yang termasuk di dalam industri pariwisata yang meliputi ada lodging, food and beverage, entertainment, travel and tour services, transportation, destination and attraction, yang terakhir ada retail business. Next please. As an industry, sebagai industri, pariwisata cannot be separated from the influence of the macro environment which consists of atau ekonomi, teknologi, sosial budaya, politik, keamanan, demokrasi, demografi, serta kesehatan. And currently, we know that kesehatan health, merupakan faktor yang paling berpengaruh, the most influential on the existence of the tourism industry. Next please. If we look at the past, ya sebenarnya ancaman kesehatan ini bukan yang pertama kali terjadi. Kalau kita meruntut dari tahun 1958, ada cacar monyet, ada Ebola tahun 76, flu burung tahun 96, SARS tahun 2002, flu, uh, flu babi, flu babi pada tahun 2009, Ebola, Mars dan yang terakhir yang pada saat ini kita hadapin adalah COVID-19. Namun di antara berbagai jenis penyakit, baik yang bersifat epidemik maupun pandemik, yang paling berpengaruh terhadap industri pariwisata pada saat ini adalah COVID-19. Next please. How the world respond to the COVID-19 pandemic? Every country has different response. Ada yang melakukan lockdown, social distancing, physical distancing, travel ban, travel restricted, atau ada yang stay at home order. 
the consequences on this government policies affect the tourism industry both globally and domestic. Kenapa ini menjadi permasalahan yang sangat besar di dalam industri pariwisata? Oleh karena esensi dari pariwisata adalah mobilitas penduduk. Sementara pembatasan pergerakan penduduk di era pandemi COVID ini menjadi salah satu problem dari pariwisata karena pembatasan masalah tersebut dalam upaya untuk memutus mata rantai penyebaran COVID-19. Next, please. The impact of COVID-19 on tourism industry, saya mengutip dari beberapa sumber, ya antara lain di situ sudah disebutkan bahwa turis internasional itu berkurang 700 juta. Akibatnya, industri pariwisata mengalami kerugian kurang lebih sebesar 730 miliar dolar US. Dan angka PHK sebagai imbas daripada COVID-19 itu mencapai 50 juta. Itu adalah impact of COVID-19 on tourism industry secara global. Nah, bagaimana kondisi di Indonesia? Ini data-data saya peroleh dari uh, Kemen Parekraf dan uh, BPS. Wisatawan mancanegara turun dari tahun 2019 ke 2020 itu turun 75 persen. Wisatawan Nusantara dari tahun 2019 sampai dengan 2020 turun 29,7 persen. Dan pendapatan devisa turun sangat drastis sekali, sangat signifikan sekali 79 persen. Diperkirakan ada sekitar 15 juta pekerja di industri pariwisata yang terdampak, terdampak oleh karena COVID-19. Ini yang saya sampaikan, the big problem, but we have to solve the problem. Next, please. On the other hand, tourists also respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. There is a change in tourism, in tourist behavior. Nah, inilah yang disebut, ya, inilah yang disebut the era of new normality. Perubahan apa yang terjadi? Now, ya, sekarang ini, Turis fokus pada health, pada kesehatan. Ya. Turis akan mencari tempat destinasi yang menyandarkan fasilitas-fasilitas kesehatan. Yang kedua, aspek security, aspek keamanan. Seorang turis akan melihat physical distancing-nya di tempat destinasi pariwisata tersebut. Kemudian yang ketiga adalah convenience, kenyamanan. Microtourism akan menjadi tren di era COVID-19 ini. Kenapa? Karena bepergian dengan keluarga yang sudah dikenal, mereka lebih nyaman. Jadi bukan kepada grup tour lagi. Kemudian yang keempat adalah hygiene, kebersihan. Yang kelima adalah safety, keselamatan, yaitu penerapan protokol kesehatan secara ketat. Dan yang terakhir adalah safe money. Why? Karena COVID berdampak terhadap pendapatan masyarakat. Within this limitation, How do they travel? Nah inilah konsep yang muncul kembali dalam industri pariwisata. Ini adalah staycation. Ada tren wisata di era kenormalan baru. Next please. Staycation itu become popular during COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. Staycation is the way untuk memulihkan dan merevitalisasi your pikiran badan kita dan spirit atau jiwa kita. Sebenarnya the term of staycation itu originally berasal dari USA. Ya, merupakan singkatan antara dengan stay and vacation. Nah, kelahiran stay vacation pada tahun 2008 itu sebenarnya disebabkan oleh adanya market krisis in the USA. At the same time, ada awareness of the environment impact of tourism. Nah, itulah yang memunculkan, ya, memunculkan staycation di Amerika. Namun pengertian daripada staycation itu sangat ambiguity, mendua. Ya, ada yang mengatakan bahwa staycation itu adalah holiday di rumah, stay di rumah. 
not far from rumah ada yang menat, ada yang mengatakan domestic travel depend on ya jadi pengertian daripada uh, staycation tersebut depend on karakteristik budaya masing-masing next please ini adalah reason for staycation oleh karena masalah ekonomi climate security political unrest epidemic and pandemic dan juga ada kesadaran ya untuk pelestarian lingkungan hidup dan menumbuhkan ekonomi lokal. Next please. What are the benefit of staying staycation? Nah, paling tidak ya, paling tidak ada tujuh benefit from staycation bagi seorang turis. Yang pertama adalah easy travel. Easy travel artinya apa? Tidak memerlukan membawa perlengkap perlengkapan tidak perlu pesan akomodasi, transportasi, dan sebagainya. Less planning. Tidak perlu mengatur jadwal jauh-jauh hari. Yang ketiga adalah safe time. Karena staycation itu bisa menginap, atau mungkin tidak perlu menginap. Yang keempat adalah safe money, karena tidak perlu harus berpergian ke luar negeri. Yang kelima adalah reduce stress, menghilangkan kejenuhan. Dan keenam itu adalah kesadaran untuk membantu ekonomi masyarakat lokal, Kemudian yang ketujuh adalah reduce ecologic, ecological impact. Ya, jadi tidak perlu menggunakan moda transportasi yang jauh-jauh, cukup jarak dekat saja sehingga uh, mengirit uh, apa itu resources yang dia gunakan. Penggunaan, penggunaan air juga lebih efisien. Nah, in my opinion, pariwisata berbasis ekotourism merupakan salah satu pilihan yang tepat dalam melakukan staycation di era kenormalan baru. Ini tadi yang saya katakan bahwa pemilihan tema seminar internasional ini sangat tepat sekali di dalam era kenormalan baru. Next please. Kenapa ekotourism? Tadi saya sampaikan bahwa staycation salah satunya tepat kalau dilaksanakan di uh, destinasi yang berbasis, pariwisata yang berbasis ekotourism. Oleh karena, ecotourism is not just good for environment, but also for personal development and mental health. In another word, ecotourism make us feel happy and good. Nah, ini sesuai dengan tujuan turis yang melakukan staycation untuk mendapatkan pengalaman yang menyenangkan sesuai dengan harapannya, menikmati udara yang sehat, aman, nyaman, bersih, belajar sesuatu yang baru yang memberikan pengalaman yang menyenangkan dan menghidupkan ekonomi lokal. Jadi ekotourism itu mencakup ekologi, sosial budaya, ekonomi, pendidikan tentang lingkungan hidup yang merupakan anugerah Tuhan dan pengalaman yang menang, menyenangkan untuk mempelajari sesuatu yang baru serta memberikan suatu kenangan, memorable experience kepada para turis. How is Indonesia potential in developing ecotourism based tourism? If we look at tourism product portfolio, kalau kita melihat produk portfolio yang ada di Indonesia, Indonesia tourism portfolio consists of culture 60%. Ya, jadi produk portfolio pariwisata di Indonesia, ini data yang dari uh, Kemen Parekraf, budaya itu adalah 60%. Dari 60 persen, 20 persen itu adalah heritage atau warisan budaya. Kemudian yang kedua adalah nature atau alam. Itu adalah 35 persen. Sedangkan man-made itu adalah 5 persen. Ya, bermacam-macam ekosistem, flora, fauna, budaya yang beraneka ragam ada semuanya di Indonesia. So, from the tourism product portfolio, Indonesia has great potential untuk membangun pariwisata based ecotourism. Nah, what we need to do is how to develop pariwisata berbasis ecotourism tersebut. Next, please. Yang pertama, tentu kita perlu mengacu kepada delapan prinsip yang disampaikan oleh di Ecotourism Society, International Society. Kemudian yang kedua, pemerintah telah 
mengatur tentang ekoturisme tersebut baik melalui undang-undang, peraturan menteri, peraturan bersama menteri, dan tentu ada peraturan daerah yang perlu dijadikan sebagai landasan yuridis dalam penyelenggaraan pariwisata berbasis ekoturisme. Yang ketiga tentu di dalam mengembangkan tersebut ya diperlukan sebuah studi kelayakan dalam pengembangan ekoturisme. Yang terakhir next piece in closing presentation in closing my presentation I would like to propose a model of a technique without panicking. Maybe use as a model from the next joint research part. Barangkali model yang saya paparkan ini bisa dijadikan sebagai sebuah uh, sebuah model untuk digunakan sebagai riset bersama ya di antara para peserta di seminar internasional ini. Di mana pandemi Covid ya mengharuskan pemerintah untuk membuat sebuah kebijaksanaan untuk mencegah penyebaran virus. Kemudian yang kedua, di sisi lain bahwa pandemi COVID-19 itu akan change ya tourism behavior. Nah, kebijakan pemerintah, policy government and tourism behavior itu akan berpengaruh terhadap staycation. Sementara staycation yang tepat salah satu pilihannya adalah pada ekoturism karena prinsip-prinsip ekoturism selaras dengan staycation. Demikian presentasi yang dapat kami sampaikan, semoga dapat memberikan manfaat bagi peserta. Matur Sukma atas kesempatannya dan salam saya dari Jogja, Indonesia. Thank you, Pak Made. Well, please give big applause. Okay. Well, the first speaker today. <laughs> okay, thank you, uh, Prof. Tony, for your great presentation. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, it spent exactly 20 minutes, as we scheduled only 20 minutes uh, for his great presentation. And, well, we have a third third. Um, based on this presentation, uh, entirely tourism and the new era of new normality, and then picnic without uh, panic. Um, well, some that I could uh, underline uh, about this proposal, about the, the, the last lay, the, 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 the model actually, uh, pic picnic without panic, including, um, well, following the government regulation, and then tourists be happier to uh, let's say uh, in, in in let's say encourage tourism uh tourism in general and eco tourism uh, particularly in this uh COVID uh pandemic and also um he explained about uh, staycation. Uh, this is uh, coming from stay and vacation, um, become very popular in this uh, COVID uh, 19. And yeah, he's also explained the, the, the reason why staycation is important because of economic, climate, security, and political, and of course, of this pandemic uh, of COVID 19. Um, well, let us. And gentlemen, um, well, we have uh, the role of, of discussion later in, in this international seminar. Uh, all the participants, if you have question, would you please just write your question in the chat room, and also including whom your question will be addressed to, right? So, in after all speaker presented um, the presentation, we're going to have special uh, session for the dis discussion or uh, Q&A session, all right? So thank you again, uh, Prof. Tony and Dr. Tono for your great presentation, right? And, and now I would like to invite uh, the second speaker in this international 
seminar. Ladies and gentlemen, um, he is coming from Jordan. Um, he is Dr. Saker A. A. Al Bad Sayed. Um, yeah, he, he was graduated from Bachelor of Human uh, Science, Arabic Language and Literature for his bachelor degree and for master degree, degree Master of Management. And lastly, um, he graduated uh, from Dr. Philosophy uh, Management. Um, uh, he was born in Jordan, Ma'an, Jordan, uh, 1st of May, 1976. He is now uh, an assistant professor in Bar Al Balka, sorry, Al Balka Applied University, South Jordan. Um, Assalamualaikum, Dr. Sakir. Yeah. Assalamualaikum. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so still um, uh, very early morning now in Jordan, right? What time is it now, Dr. Uh, no, actually the time is 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, right? <laughs> yeah. Normally we just get up here, right? So thank you very much again for... No for uh, yeah, joining us. <laughs> All right. So, um, hang on, uh, I prepare your presentation. Inshallah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, are you ready? Uh, yes, ready. Uh, hang on. Um, so. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is our second speaker today. this moment. Well, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, yeah, um, this is Dr. Sakir. Um, he's going to present the topic Ecotourism Diplomacy as an Alternative Tourism in New Era of Pandemic COVID 19, a case of Jordan. Well, um, Dr. Sakir, um, yes. for the next 20 minutes, uh, is totally yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum and uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, today, inshallah, we're talking about the ecotourism development in uh, Jordan. And uh, first of all, uh, can you please the next slide? And the next. First of all, let me to express my uh, uh, thankfulness to all of the community, actually, of the international seminar and also Warmeda University in Bali. 
Uh, really, it's uh, I am so glad that to be here and uh, to share with you some points and some uh, important actually notes about the COVID-19 during uh, this years uh, uh, and what the uh, in fact uh, in the ecotourism by the countries, especially some. Uh, countries uh, famous thing with the uh, uh, forest and uh, with the natural uh, resource. Uh, the next, please. Let's talk today about, uh, okay, for them, uh, your information, uh, I've been actually staying in Malaysia more than 20 years uh, ago. And uh, also I visit Bali and I have some, uh, uh, like uh, ideas and some uh, another review about uh, how the ecotourism work and how they take care and how they develop the countries. But let's talk about the Jordan first. As you know, Jordan, it's in the Middle East uh, and uh, it's bordered by uh, Arabic countries uh, from the north uh, and from the south. Uh, like uh, from the south Saudi Arabia, from the north Syria and Lebanon, and uh, from the west Palestine, uh, and also Iraq uh, from the east. Uh, the location of Jordan is uh, actually a strategic location because it's in the Middle East, as you know here uh, in the borders, we have a lot of uh, historical and uh, political uh, uh, sometimes issue affect the places, like, but we, uh, as uh, the eco tourism in Jordan, it's uh, almost uh, uh, the government's taking care and uh, try to improve all the times to develop the surface there and to get more visitors to, to support uh, the economy in, in Jordan. Next, please. Okay, uh, uh, as uh, from the beginning, the area of the history before the ecotourism uh, eco in Jordan actually was uh, taken care by uh, late, uh, His Majesty, the late King Hussein bin Talal, uh, who was actually behind of the creation, uh, the main uh, uh, society, it's uh, they called the name, the Royal, the Royal Society for the Conservation of Natural. It was created in 1966. Uh, the reason why they created to protect and manage the natural resources in Jordan, because as you know, uh, there is many places, uh, many natural resources in Jordan without to protect that places. Uh, it usually in the end it will be disappear because people here uh, they used last time to be hunting to not caring of the animals not caring of the places uh, that's why uh, our late king uh, hussein established this uh, society in 1966 to protect these places and to have uh, more economy more income to the country by this is uh, the, uh, the tourism. And uh, this is uh, the ecotourism practices uh, and where considered when the planning of tourism destination in order to improve the contribution of the local national economic development. That's what I just talked about it. Uh, the reason to have more income, to develop the economics, to take care of the places, to have more visitors either uh, internal or external. And the uh, Ministry of Tourism and the uh, Jordan Tourism Board uh, working together to publish a uh, booklet, uh, this booklet to help the visitors how to take care, how to deal, deal, with, to deal with the places that uh, encouraging or the, uh, uh, focusing uh, to keep it as uh, natural without any damage, without any uh, going, uh, doing uh, uh, illegal things like uh, hunting, like uh, killing the animals, like uh, 
even uh, keeping the places clean or something. Next, please. Some, uh, there is, uh, we need to mention some of places like, uh, for example, Ajlon uh, Forest Reserve and Dana is for reserve plus Wadi Ram and let's see. Let's talk about some one by one. If we talk about Ajlon, Ajlon it's in the north of Jordan. And uh, actually uh, it was uh, the famous things there, uh, the weather uh, and uh, the trees and the national uh, people, many people, they like even from outside the country, they came here. And in October uh, 2018, Ajlon uh, won a place among the top 100 uh, sustainable destination on the global tourism map because uh, the atmosphere there uh, it's uh, natural and uh, uh, people who visit that place is uh, always uh, make relaxing and uh, because of the you know the above of the sea grades the oxygen will be more clearer and uh, more uh, refreshness for the others. Next, please. Uh, another one, it's uh, le, they call uh, Dana Peaceful Reserve. It's also a very large uh, national reserve in Jordan, located in the south of Jordan. And uh, it uh, was on uh, 1989, uh, they found it and they developed the area and they uh, try to save the, uh, you know, the some of the animals there, especially uh, nowadays you can't find easily. And this village uh, also, they develop and they improve it with the hotels and they give some promotion, recommendation to stay there, to attract the people to visit that area. Because actually it's around the, uh, 200 kilometers from the capital and without some accommodation and some of the promotions, uh, it's not easy to be able to visit some like these places if it's far away. Next, please. And this is uh, the Mujib Natural Res uh, Reserve. It's uh, actually also uh, in the way to the Dead Sea, but this reserve, uh, يعني, it was uh, uh, yani bordering uh, to the Dead Sea, uh, long uh, lowest point of the earth. If you, as you know, the lowest point in the Dead Sea, 396 below the sea level. And uh, this area also, uh, the approximately it's uh, 220 square feet kilometer. Next, please. Azraq Waterland, it's uh, also a uh, reserve, a uh, national uh, located in the town of Azraq. It's uh, near to the border uh, Jordan with Iraq. And uh, this place is also famous with uh, some type of uh, migratory birds uh, because that they established or they found that area and uh, keep it, uh, any, save it from uh, out of the, uh, they called legally people to save uh, the natural log and natural uh, birds there. Next, please. Shomari Wildlife Reserve also, it's a natural reserve uh, near to Al Azraq. Uh, it's approximately 100 kilometers east of Amman. Uh, and uh, this one also uh, in 1975, the, as we call the uh, Royal Society for the Conservation of Natural, uh, try to breeding and uh, integrate the locally existing wildlife to keep it also, this one around 22 square kilometers. Uh, and it's uh, very famous uh, from the type of animals uh, some also the includes Arabian Oryx, uh, Somali Oryx, and some other uh, type of the Oryx. Next, please. Wadi Ram, it is in the south of Jordan also. It's near to Aqaba, actually, but it's around 300 kilometers from the capital of Amman. 
And uh, this is a uh, very famous places to at uh, globally actually, and uh, many, many visitors come also to visit these places because it's a desert place and it's natural, hundred uh, percent. But the way how the country improve it and how they develop it, they build uh, hotels and they build a new, uh, like uh, swimming pools with the hotels, with some activities, uh, safari, to attract the visitors to make uh, more, I mean, to improve the uh, economic uh, to the country. Uh, because uh, for a while they keep it as is it, uh, and uh, there is no surfaces, there is no bathrooms, no nothing. Uh, that uh, makes some visitors to avoid to come again to the places. But after the country taking care of this place, uh, many, many visitors like to go there to have uh, staying one, two nights and to enjoy the places, uh, especially early morning or night uh, when the sunrise, uh, the, it's uh, very beautiful. And because of that, the government taking care and uh, develop the places. Next, please. Did see, uh, as it's very famous places in the world. And uh, this place is, uh, it's around 100 kilometer, uh, less than 100 kilometer actually uh, from uh, the capital. And uh, it's uh, below the, uh, around 430 meters below the sea level and the uh, lowest uh, land in the earth. Next, please. And uh, this one, uh, baptism, it's uh, making some people uh, do uh, for uh, like uh, emirates in, in the Yani. They come to visit it. It's in the west, uh, east bank of uh, Jordan. And uh, they called uh, Al Maqtas. The name is Al Maqtas. Uh, they come. Uh, for uh, yani it's uh, for uh, religions and uh, every year they have some uh, yani meetings or some uh, appointment there the last one uh, oh, it's not least the gulf it's uh, they called uh, akaba uh, gulf of akaba it's uh, only this uh, uh, we have in jordan one uh, sea it's a uh, one they call it Al-Aqaba, it's around 300 something kilometers from Amman. Uh, this place was developed also and uh, was uh, uh, taking care about the reality and uh, because we have many type of fishes and many type of uh, yani, uh, natural sources and uh, this is uh, about 250 divers are performed annually uh, also, it's uh, the main uh, board to the uh, Jordan. Next, please. As I mentioned here before, the Royal Society, actually, the main reason they, they, they're taking care of the places because of the uh, last time uh, there is uh, due to illegal hunting and uh, uh, some uh, general, uh, yani, uh, blatant, uh, the governments uh, decide to establish the, the community, to establish uh, this society to taking care and to have a responsibility uh, about uh, the resourcing in the country, uh, which is uh, the main, the main reason uh, this uh, society uh, to keep the country clean and to try to make some benefit to the economy. Next, please. And uh, actually, uh, since they يعني, established uh, the Royal Society to taking care of the country, there is uh, some um, uh, some environment change and some development happens. But when the uh, come, if we are look to the situation nowadays and what happened about the world with COVID-19, it changed 
a lot of things change some protocols uh, change some the ways how to deal with visitors how to deal with the uh, even uh, religions uh, even when we deal with the uh, customer with others uh, next please the the other one as I told you, the, the mention in the beginning, the ministry, they give some, provide some booklets uh, to, to, as a guideline for the visitors uh, to, to make it for them clear uh, how to use the new uh, protocol uh, for COVID-19. And there is some uh, practices and guidelines uh, for the visitors to the natural resource places, like you have to respect the culture and the tradition of the local community, uh, purchase a local product, uh, use energy conservation practice, follow direction and rules of the reserves. Yeah, you have to follow the direction it, to be in the safe side. Uh, for example, uh, you have nowadays, you cannot visit any place or you have to get the mask, you have to, uh, uh, in Jordan now, actually you cannot enter uh, any, sh even the shop, even the places you got as a tourist or something until you get the fixing of uh, uh, COVID-19. Uh, you have a certificate that you already get the fixing, okay, you can enter the public transportation or the public places or like this. And you have to use the water conservation practices. Do not use natural water resources as they may not be clean. Do not uh, hang alone in the dark. And also there is some uh, protocols for ecotourism. Next, please. Practices during pandemic and recovery. At which is uh, a person can become regular member with several benefits or can do it for animal. If you buy paying fees, we provide some benefits such as a parent certificate, a free entry to the place and to reserve uh, and to visit the adopt animals. Yani it's to uh, promote that the places you can do like this. Jordan uses tourism as a tool, also a position by promoting tourism through the country, business owners and hotel computer and Jordan's landscape. Also the eco, uh, tourism uh, provide job opportunity to the poor people because uh, they need it at this time because some of the uh, many many the uh, jobs is during the COVID-19 uh, country try to do the, the best way to avoid any uh, losing or any what happened uh, for the decreasing the economy uh, after COVID-19. Next. Uh, no, 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 um, your time is still four minutes, please. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. sorry, sorry. Yeah. I'm going yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, the, as uh, we can see here, ecotourism equal to uh, sustainability tourism to highlight local resources and several agenda during pandemic and recovery. Uh, before I finished. Uh, and I would like to share my experience. As I told you from the beginning, I am around uh, uh, 20 years in Asia, in, uh, in Malaysia. I graduated and studied there, and I've been one of the, our member of the embassy there. And uh, I uh, visit uh, mostly uh, all Asia countries like China, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Maldives, uh, Singapore, all of this. I really found that uh, they taking care a lot of the natural resources there and they have a law and they have uh, to protect the places. Even uh, if we look to the some places when they cutting the trees, uh, there is the rules there, there is a law. You cannot uh, simply just cut uh, from the forest and export, no. Uh, there is some rules, uh, I'm really, uh, uh, Honor to to have to to see these things because uh, by these rules uh, they can save the country they can save the sources they can save the uh, natural resources there and uh, I really was very happy when I visit Bali because it's nice place and uh, 
I wish uh, for them all the best and for improving and developing. Uh, hopefully, I have the chance to visit again. Uh, I really was very happy there. Uh, inshallah, in the future, we have uh, some cooperation together with the universities or some meetings like this. Uh, in the end, next please. In the end, I would like to thank all of you for your efforts, for your uh, work, for your uh, uh, time, and uh, for giving me the chance to be with you. And uh, all the best, inshallah, for all of us and for to the success of the seminar. My best regards to all of you. Oh. Thank you very much, Dr. Sakyat. Everyone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, um, yeah, Mr. Kate Field Appreciation to Dr. Sakyat, who is a French Tech Great Presentation. Um, about the ecotourism in Jordan. And, well, from his uh, presentation, uh, we got some presentation uh, to underline uh, that uh, ecotourism practices uh, in Jordan will consider when planning for tourism in in order to improve uh, the contribution to local and national economic development. Um, so it's uh, similar with us actually um, we focus to develop our increase our economy from uh, this a kind of tourism and also the Jordan Tourism uh, Board has published a tourism special or a tourism booklet um, and well it's uh, ex explaining um, six natural uh, reserves including Aljun Forest Reserve, Wadi Rome, uh, Bethany, beyond the Jordan, Dead Sea, and others. It, it's uh, quite interesting. And, well, um, the booklet also provides some important and useful guidelines for the people, including respect the culture and the tradition of the local community and purchase local product, use energy conservation practice, and so on. So um, again, uh, thank you uh, very much to Dr. Sakya uh, for your great presentation. You exactly also spent 30 minutes. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, yeah, now I would like to invite the third uh, speaker today is Oliver Dasir, Dr. Aswa. So uh, good morning. Assalamualaikum, Dr. Aswa. Yeah. Good morning, yeah. everybody. Good yeah, morning, good night, Dr. Mane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good morning. Salam. Yeah, how is Kuala Lumpur at the moment? And uh, this unique uh, island. Right. Uh, I think we, we, we have the same time, 11, 11 yeah. 30 uh, in the morning. We, uh, it's right here. And I think Dr. Shakir has been living here for many years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. <sir. Thank> you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. We, we're doing re reunion, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, um, yeah, uh, Dr. Muhammad Ashraf Asim was graduated from the uh, Doctor of Philosophy Management in University of Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Uh, he take digital marketing, so he'll be happy. Uh, for his doctorate program and master degree of science and in international business, Brunel University, United Kingdom, uh, taking international marketing, international business strategy. And he also was graduated from Bachelor of Business Technology in uh, Computer Entrepreneurial Management, uh, University of Lumpur, Malaysia. And um, yes, been six years of progressive experience teaching and learning mainly in business and marketing. They did uh, subject as lecturer, two years experience as teaching and learning coordinator center of for Instructional Technology and Curriculum Department, University of Kuala Lumpur uh, Business School. Uh, two years of experience as manager responsible for planning, organ organizing, directing, monitoring, controlling, administration, 
excellent digital marketing activities at premium uh, suite uh, SDN DHD, two years of experience involved in mass marketing as head unit marketing material. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, well, uh, uh, let's directly invite um, Dr. Asra. And of course, I, I cannot read all of um, his uh, curriculum today. Um, now, uh, he would like to share his uh, concept is thought to be at hospitality, hospitality umbrella. Of course, it's related with um, our topic today. Um, Tourism development as an alternative tourism in the new era of the 19th. Uh, to Dr. Rasla, uh, time for 20 next 30 minutes is totally yours. Thank you. All right, um, thank you, moderator, uh, my fellow speakers, lecturers uh, from the University of Warren Badewa, and uh, audiences who are watching our live seminar today. So I hope you can hear my voice clearly and see the slides of the hospitality umbrella right in front of you. Can you see it? Yes, it, it, it's, yeah, we can see clearly, Doctor. Okay. That's good. So yeah, yeah. since we have the, um, the, um, the, the speakers, right, uh, I've already you know, discussed about the, um, the details of uh, what's happening. And I'm just I'm going to share with you the, um, the basic about the um, hospitality umbrella, about the tourism sector. And then we go straight to the ecotourism and the, um, the impact of it today. And why should we think that this ecotourism uh, is the best alternative or the alternative in general um, to replace uh, conventional um, tourism in this pandemic of um, COVID-19? Right, let's, let's have a look of the hospitality umbrella, which I believe um, all the tourism students, if they're watching now, or the um, uh, tourism and lecturers, or the docent, yeah, um, to have um, you know brief idea of what um, hospitality umbrella is. There are five, uh, I can say there are five components or five industries that related closely each other in making um, tourism a successful, yeah, in making uh, tourism industry a successful. You can see here, we have travel or logistics, we have lodging, hotels, motels, resorts. We have the event management, assembly, and we have meetings, convention, expositions. We have restaurants, yeah, food and beverages, F&B, and also we have recreation, which include attraction, gaming, parks, recreation, and so on. These five, yeah, five um, components, again, what we call it as hospitality umbrella, they are close to each other, okay? With the collaboration of these five that makes Okay. Um, um, a tourism sector, a successful event. Yeah. So what we can see here, or what we can see today, is that because of COVID-19, yeah, what happened today, that makes these five, I can see all sectors, right, all uh, components of hospitality umbrella affected back. Yeah. And you can look at the, um, the um, logistic parts, yeah, travel, yeah? And, uh, air travel, for example. Since uh, many countries, I think majority of countries, they ban, okay, they, they close border, right? they close border in order to avoid you know, the spreading of the disease. So um, air travel, I mean, the a, a, a plane or the um, airlines industry, they, they, they've been affected badly. And then the cruise ships, yeah, the rail, okay, the coach, the automobile, and everything related to uh, logistics, except for the um, transportation of goods except for the essential services, they are still survived, but related to um, what we call as tourism, they have been, um, you know, uh, suffered. Okay? They have been suffered. So uh, not just travel or logistics, let's include lodging, hotels. Right? What happened to the hotels, eh? even five-star hotels, they are suffering until they need, eh? or they, they have been forced to sell their food eh? on Food Panda, on Grab Food, on whatever. Uh, online, uh, provide the online platforms just to survive. A lot of people have been terminated. Okay, A lot of employees have been terminated. Okay? It doesn't matter you five hostels, uh, you are uh, five star hotels, four star hotels, motels, resorts, all of them affected badly. Okay? Not just that, you can see all the meetings, the conventions, nobody go there, nobody organize an event, not just because of the government um, banning from that from happening, but also people won't go there. Okay? 
because they're afraid of this COVID-19. Not just they, us also afraid of this disease. And it goes to FNB. FNB that related to tourism, they are not really affected since they are also categorized as essential. They need to provide food, people. But that the one that located or attached together with the uh, services in um, the tourism sector, they affected. And then finally, we have the recreation, yeah? the gaming, theme parks, and whatsoever all have been closed. And they also affected. So we can see this hospitality umbrella, right? Uh, in, in general, as explanation uh, from my, my from from me at the beginning of this um, seminar from uh, for my for my turn. Alright, so let's look at this thing. I have very simple slides uh, and, uh, uh, because I have only I have only twenty minutes. So let's look at the um, definition of ecotourism itself. What is ecotourism? Right, if you can look here, it's a responsible travel. Natural, natural areas that reserve the natural, sustains the well-being of the local people, again, the local people there, and involves interpretation and education. So there are a lot of benefits of this uh, ecotourism. If, if we, um, you know, if we taking serious of making this ecotourism as successful as a plan to recover tourism as a whole. Yeah. So what are the benefits? Let me highlight to you. Number one, promotion, promoting environmental awareness. Yeah. We, we, we turn from a, a conventional a tourism that focus on entertainment, the theme parks and everything. We, we, we turn them to uh, ecotourism so that uh, they, have, they still can have fun. Yeah. Number two, they still can have fun in the environmental, on a, in a green, Okay, in a green, uh, what we call it as um, uh, environment. Yeah? Number two, offering direct financial benefits for conservation. Yeah? We want these uh, natural things to be conserved, yeah? to be taken care of. right? So if we actively, uh, the government involved together with this, we directly can help to conserve these uh, natural habitats, for example. And the, um, the final part is the most important part. The, the most important benefits that I want to highlight here is monetarily benefiting and empowering the local. Meaning that it helps the local people in terms of economy. Yeah, The local people normally will, will, will involve okay, in this, uh, um, this uh, ecotourism. Not, not just only the, the people who live in that particular area, but local people in that particular country. Yeah, because border is closed. Yeah, so we want to do what we call it is to boost the, the local economy, the local people. Yeah, so that the country can sustain. Yeah, uh, with the um, with this this kind of activity, yeah, uh, tourism activity. So what we want to do is that we want this uh, benefit. Yeah, we want we really want this benefit to, to boost the local. Yeah, so that's why um, if, if you ask me about ecotourism as being a, the um, alternative to, uh, to tourism as general, yes, it's, it's, it's a need to do, especially, especially for Indonesia. Why I say Indonesia? Let's look at the, um, the facts that I can share with you. All right, so Malaysia, a small country as compared to Indonesia, we have only eight. 100 plus islands as compared to you, you've got 17,000 plus islands and uh, um, more than 7,000, if I'm not mistaken, they are volcanic. Yeah? And then Malaysia, we have only 30 mountains. You have 100, more, 100 plus mountains. This is just a rough figure or just a, a small fact that I can share with you how, how, how neat for you to have this tourism. Okay? You must take this chance uh, to to go to uh for to go for this ecotourism because of the um the resources that you have. Yeah. Right? Let's look, let's look how big you are. That's another that's another thing. How big you are, you can see how big you are. I think most of you live here, yeah. Small one, Bali here. Uh, yeah. So uh, how big you are, how resourceful you are with this environmental, with this flora and fauna. So this is the chance, right? Opportunity, right? Uh, go back to my slide here, right? Okay. 
you might say that, all right, um, there's no pimps coming in, all right? They are afraid. Okay, this is the chance for you, or, or this is the best time for you to preserve the nature, revising policies, okay? including the uh, including with the government policies, and also do the maintenance works at the um, at, at your place. Okay? For example, suspension bridge. It's not cheap to maintain suspension bridge. It's, it's expensive. So why I say it's the best time? Because not many people. So you can focus on maybe um, do the maintenance works, buying or purchasing on the, the tools that related to the, um, the items yeah, that you have, the equipment and so on. So that's the best time to preserve the nature. Not just uh, the, the physical thing, but it's also about the flora and fauna that you have, right? That is the best time for you to preserve them, All right? For example, you can preserve this. I can show you. You can have this uh, coral reef preservation, for example. This is the time for you to protect, conserve, and restore the coral reef resources, right? This is what I call it as um, the, uh, uh, fixing the ecosystem, yeah, fixing the ecosystem, right? So unregulated areas can harm the climate. Loss of natural resources, such as degradation of water and soil, excessive pollution and physical effect, including deforestation. Yeah, maybe before COVID nineteen. Yeah, maybe before COVID nineteen, people looking at this, uh, uh, all this uh, natural habitat as a as an opportunity for them to make money. There comes a lot of projects and there's deforestation. So that's how it works. So when COVID nineteen come, maybe it's the best time for us to restore everything, restore the green, the natural, the flora and fauna. Right. So. I'm talking about the um, uh, maintenance works, uh, maintenance works of the the, um, the equipments that you have, okay, that you provide to the to the what we call it as visitors, okay. You must remember, excellent safety can gain trust among visitors. Okay, you provide an excellent um, safety. Maybe you during the uh, maintenance work, you you identify that this bridge is not good, so you need to replace with a good one with an excellent one, so that we can increase the safety. Okay, for the visitors. So this safety, maybe it can be, become viral. Okay, this is the place I visited last time. The safety is very good and become viral, become word of mouth. Right? People keep talking about it and you gain trust and make people, you know, keep coming to you. So that's how it works. Right? So uh, one more thing is about carrying capacity. And I believe you understand about this carrying capacity. Carrying capacity is a policy where you need to set the maximum number of visitors. Okay, that visit a place at a time, uh, maybe a week or maybe at a time, maybe at a day, so that we can avoid any harm to the physical atmosphere. Right, that is carrying capacity, and um, uh, we need to have this kind of policy okay, at a certain places, right? And I believe once the, um, the COVID nineteen has been, you know, not not uh, disappeared at, at, uh, as a whole, but uh, reduced, maybe uh, become declined, right? the cases become declined. So people started to you know, want to travel, right? eager to travel and so on. So carrying capacity, you must prepare a number of people that come to your place and then you need to set for the maximum number of visitors at a place at a time. So that's why I mentioned uh, this is the best time for you to revise policy. I think, uh, think about what's going, going to happen when everybody or 80% of the population uh, get the vaccine. So we, are we prepared enough to receive them? Okay, so that's how it works. And then looking at the trend, a declining number of Indonesia's daily COVID-19 cases and because of the um, nationwide mass vaccination campaign. So what I can suggest, what I can I propose, okay, what can I propose to the government, okay, to any government I think might, might think this is a possible way to um, recover this economic, no, no economic, this tourism industry is number one, to identify the green line, the COVID-19 green zones to be opened. Meaning that maybe in Bali, there are certain areas that have been categorized as green zone. Yeah, and then people can go there, right? People feel safe to go there. Right? Number two, to enforce strict COVID-19 health protocols on visitor. Meaning that you know, okay, this is the green zone. To enter the green zone, there's a, there are policies, there are, there are what we call it as the protocols that they need to fulfill, and then they can enter the green zones to preserve the green zone. 
right? Number three is allowing, okay? allowing travel okay, by agency. Why I say um, allowing by agency, by not letting them, by not letting the visitors go by themselves. If they travel by travel agency, okay, it's going to be easy if any cases happen. Because if you go by travel agency, you will exactly know where they go, the trip, the location, okay, by using the agency. So that's the, um, the way that we can boost the um, economic yeah, uh, in, the, um, in the tourism side. Allow them to travel by agency. So that, and the agency need to register with the Ministry of Health, for example, to let the Ministry of Health know where they will go. So that if anything can happen, if anything happens, if they want or two cases, you know, or there's an outbreak and that place that they visited, they know okay, this group of people need to be quarantined, right? Because they're registered people okay, by the agency. So uh, another thing is that um, talking about uh, the, um, the uh, ecotourism, right? Ecotourism is not like, um, you know, uh, entertainment tourism, okay? Because of what? All right. Um, Entertainment tourism, for example, um, a theme park. They, 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 they need, you know, crowd, a lot of people. They, they, they cannot be uh, separated. So ecotourism is different. You have the advantage of having a large place, for example, in a, in a forest, for example, in a forest. So you can group them separately so that they will not be, you know, uh, contact each other or they cannot be in a, in a large crowd. So that is the advantage of ecotourism that we can, you know, that, that, that we can still, okay, that we can still um, run this business, all right, amid this um, COVID-19 disease. So it's, it's, a, it's a good place for me, if you ask me. It's a, it's a, it's a, good, uh, it's a good opportunity yeah, for you to have this kind. And then one more thing, it's about the... Um, the uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Uh, your time still uh, another four minutes. I'm sorry? Four minutes, please. Four minutes. All right, and, and finally, it's about advertisements, right? Um, you you have the um, strict rules of COVID nineteen. You have the new norms of visiting your place. So what you need to do is that you need to make it viral. Show to the people that this is my place. I have the um, the strict rules of entering my place. I have the protocols. You cannot easily. You must be what 37, 36 uh, degrees Celsius and below, uh, and all those kind of rules that stated by Ministry of Health. And then you can uh, enjoy our our tourism hotel. That's that's how it works. All right. So um, um, but the last but not least, let me show you the uh, yeah maybe uh, some places that might you know reduce a bit uh, the burden of your eyes. Eh, looking at words. So this is what I can share with you. Eh? The um the um, rainforest in uh, Sabah. Okay, uh, being uh, being uh, this is one of the activities that we can do for tourism. So. This is the, um, the bridge to the uh, reserve forest. Okay, the, sus the suspension bridge that I mentioned just now. Yeah, so it's not it's not cheap eh, to maintain this kind of thing, all right? And then the um, this thing, okay, the um, the, uh, the rail and so on. Okay, this is the preservation that we need to do, right? During this COVID nineteen uh, era, and finally the ecosystem that I mentioned to you, all right? So that's it from me for twenty minutes. Um, you know, sharing about the um, maybe a bit on the. Um, uh, ecotourism. Uh, thank you very much. So back to you, Dr. Gadi. Um, well, thank you, Dr. Uh, Lasso, for your good presentation. You also spend less than 20, 20 minutes, 8 minutes. Uh, and then, yeah, that's good. That's good. We have um, another minute to share. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, Dr. Aswad just presented and told us where there is an impact of the impact of COVID-19, especially in related with tourism. Um, and the next question is how to boost this ecotourism center and how to sustain um, our economic uh, development. So based on this presentation, 
um, the management of nature tourism maria can generate income for the region and society in addition to creating jobs uh, uh, this is including uh, <clears throat> promoting environmental awareness offering a financial benefit for consultation truly benefiting and empowering uh, the local people and yes in the end of this presentation um, yeah you also told us that the trend in declining number of Indonesia and COVID-19 cases and the uh, nationwide um, mass vaccination campaign and for the government uh, can identify COVID-19 green zones to be open uh, in post three COVID-19 health protocol and allowing uh, to travel by agency so uh, that's all uh, the presentation given by the so thank you uh, sorry, sorry. so much uh, Dr. will continue uh, uh, next in the uh, Q&A session right? discussion session so ladies and gentlemen um, now it's time to invite uh, the last but not the least speaker um, is okay. ready with the presentation. Oh, that is under the panel. Um, yeah. He is yeah. Dr. Ana Agung Gederaka. Um, yes, he is a humanist and lecturer of the Faculty of Status from Mariwa University, including lecturer of the Faculty of Status. Is it open? Is it open? Yeah, he is completed his. Uh, uh, undergrade education in department of archaeology at the Faculty of Letters at University and master in postgraduate program at Hunhi Denpasar and doctoral program at the postgraduate doctoral program at the University in 2015. Since 2016, he has been posted as the um, head of master of public administration department here at the postgraduate program for Mariwa University in Pasar. Since 2018, he has been a consultant of the Badu Region Chicago Village and as consultant also uh, for assisted villages in Siladan, Bali, Park, Bangli, and in artwork. Um, he has been given a lot of ideas for the green dance of the first retreat uh Warmadewa and the great end of the uh Bali Parliament in 2018. And uh he also known as Balinese uh, teacher, writer, artist, and who has given uh created so many great and contributed uh, to the development of Balinese art and culture. Ladies and gentlemen, um, well, now uh, I will directly invite uh, Dr. Arago Budirake to present um, his topic about the ecotourism development of Kitamani Regency of Bangli, Bali before and amid COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So, uh, Pak Agung, how are you, Pak Agung? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. So okay. in the next 20 minutes, time is totally yours, Padu. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Good morning, all. Yeah. Om Swastiastu. Thank you, Mr. Suniasto Amarta, for giving, giving the time. Yeah. The honorable, all great speakers and participants of this seminar. Yeah, today I would like to share things about the ecotourism development in Kintamani Bali before and amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. I would like to inform you the picture. Yeah, I use as the backdrop Port Tray Geopark Batur available in Kintamani. It has been
in analytics as one of the world culture heritage in 2012 next Introduction. Since Bali was revived in the 1950s, Kitamani as a natural tourist attraction has been known by tourists. Charming objects as the target of the visit are Mount Batur or climbing, glamour of Lake Batur, Fascinating natural environment and the burial system in Trunyan village. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I introduce charming. Yeah. The picture display, yeah, charming object Mount Batur, and like Batur Kintamani Bali. Number two, the picture display, the burial system in Trunyan Village, Bali. Nah, ini kedua gambar saya pasang, saya tampilkan untuk menegaskan bahwa ya gambar yang pertama itu adalah objek yang memang ditawarkan sejak lama dari awal bangkitnya pariwisata Bali tahun 1950-an itu Gunung Batur sebagai uh, objek wisata pilihan ya mendaki ya dan kemudian juga Danau Baturnya keindahan panorama alamnya dan yang lebih spesifik lagi adalah tradisi penguburan di Trunyan ya yang tidak seperti biasanya di Bali The ecosystem development, uh, the ecotourism development of Kintamani Bangli Bali. In order to avoid monotone, Bangli Regency government has developed a number of objects. One of which is a swimming pool. The swimming pool was established by utilizing utilizing the Heart Spring of the Mount Batur Caldera with a name Toyo Dewasya Hot Spring Water Park and Batur Natural Hot Spring. Yeah. The picture display the caldera in Kintaman. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bagi Anda yang ingin melakukan perjalanan menuju apa namanya itu objek wisata kolam renang itu dalam perjalanan kita akan melewati kaldera Gunung Batur yang sesungguhnya amat tepat dipilih untuk swapoto ya itu selfie itu banyak itu hamparan kalderanya itu luar biasa dan menjadikan Gunung Batur sebagai backdropnya. Along the way to the swimming pool, there is a spacious, beautiful, interesting space to take picture in the middle of the expanse of the Mount Batur eruption caldera, and the Mount Batur became the backdrop. The development of the two swimming pool attraction, Toyo Dewasya Hot Spring Water Park, and Batur Natural Hot Spring, employ a local workforce of more than 350 people 
for both object. The condition has so the capability of improving the welfare and the local community. The picture display tourist attraction Toyo Dewata. Toyo Dewata. Ini salah satu bangunan di kolam renang renang pola apa namanya itu Toya Dewata. Dan ini juga salah satu bangunan kolam yang melengkapi permandian yang begitu indah ya dan menarik di Batur Natural Hot Springnya ya ini mulanya itu Toyo Bungkah namanya. Toyo Bungkah dan kemudian begitu pariwisata dikembangkan di Kintemani agar jangan monoton hanya objeknya Batur, Danau Batur, Gunung Batur dan Tunyan kemudian dikembangkan dengan pengembangan berupa pembuatan kolam renang yang menarik menggunakan air sumber air dari kaldera Gunung Batur. Nah, ini Toyo Bungkah dikembangkan yang sakral tetap sakral yang disakralkan. Kemudian pengembangannya ke samping sehingga tidak menodai kesakralan Toyo Bungkah. Ya, demikian. The regional original income of the Bangli Regency government has also increased by uh, as a result of the development of the tourism object. Uh, this feature so yeah, opening ceremony, the Blinkang Festival in from of Batur Temple, the first time. When the Bali provincial government was preparing, preparing the Blinkang competition activity, the world was hit by the COVID-19 pandemic with limited activity involving the masses, while the festival needed the support of the wider community. As a result, the festival was postponed. The picture show the condition of society during the COVID-19 pandemic. Closing. The COVID-19 pandemic has paralyzed world and Bali tourism activity, especially in Tamani Bangi. With interns has made tourism a source of regional or original income as a result of development activities, especially in the field of improving people's welfare and hamper. Well, that's all that I can share. Yeah. Well, that's all that I can share. Thank you. Yes, well, thank you, uh, Pak Dr. Agung Raka, for your presentation. Actually, you spent less than 20 minutes. You only spent up to 10 minutes. To 10 minutes. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it was presentation by uh, actually the last but the least speaker from um, post visit program, Dr. Anadun Adirake, who tried to explain about the implementation of the 8300 plot money, especially in Kintamani Regency. So, as he presented, um, some interesting tourist creation you can see in actually in the uh, Bangli Regency, Kintamani, like um, the actual of Mount Butter Lake. And also the Trunyan village is very um, was that uh, very interesting to see. And um, like the uh, Trunyan village is probably uh, you cannot find in uh, any uh, places in 
in, in especially in Indonesia because uh, so different in the uh, valid system. Um, and also, um, well, today you just press a little bit the Toya Devatsia hot spring water and Bali natural hot spring water is the implementation of the ecotourism development. And of course, you also studied um, in this pandemic of COVID-19, how to still be able to maintain our tourism sector, especially during, uh, in Kitamani particularly, during, um, these two uh, interesting uh, Toya de Pasia hot spring water and Bali natural hot spring water as interesting uh, tourist uh, destination, especially in Kintamani, Bangli. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, we have another 45 minutes for the question and answer session. And well, I uh, told you uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have questions, just please uh, write in the chat room. Uh, put uh, your name, probably where you're from, your station, including um, to whom <coughs> your question addressed to. But um, let me check it first. Uh, Yes, uh, while waiting for the question from the participant, I, I'll try to find this. Uh, I cannot find any of, of the participant the raising question in the uh, chat room. Um, yes, while waiting, uh, probably um, we think a little bit alone. Uh, for anybody, any uh, participant would like to raise question, just, just raise your hand. It's raising it up, and then um, uh, for the next 45 minutes, I think, uh, well, you're allowed to raise question directly to the speaker. Uh, before question uh, by the participant, uh, I'd like to give question to the speaker, Prop Honey. Uh, I, I still, I, yes, Prop Tony, uh, okay, um, yeah, uh, yeah, Prop Tony, yeah. Well, yeah. while waiting for uh, the question yeah. from the participant, um, based on your presentation, I'm really interested in uh, the, the model, right, of the clinic without panic that you uh, presented just now. Yeah. Maybe simple question, uh, Bapak Prof. Yeah. yeah. How if um, this model, how could this model be implemented, uh, for example, um, like in Bali? So far we know uh, from the Ministry of uh, Tourism, also at the moment, there is program with their work, work from working from Bali, something like that. So, how to implement this model uh, in this COVID nineteen uh, pandemic, especially in Bali? What do you think, Rob? Thank you for your question. Let me answer in Bahasa Indonesia, Pak. Maybe yeah, please, please, please. Uh, I just propose my uh, uh Oh sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry, Pak uh, Made, Doctor Made. I'm so sorry, so sorry. Yes, I propose this model, picnic without panicking. I think it's uh, better we make a research, joint research yeah, to implement. 
apakah model yang saya propose ini dapat diimplementasikan di dalam uh, satu wilayah tertentu. Tapi menjawab pertanyaan dari uh, Dr. Made tadi sangat menarik sekali, apakah model ini bisa diterapkan di Bali? Saya memberikan sebuah keyakinan bahwa model itu sangat bisa diterapkan di Bali. Kenapa? Karena pertama, Bali memiliki ya Bali memiliki potensi yang sangat luar biasa sekali di bidang ekoturism. Baik itu, itu ekoturism yang bersifat alam maupun ekoturism yang bersifat budaya. Itu yang pertama. Nah yang kedua, bahwa pasar ekoturism, pasar ekoturism itu semakin meningkat. Karena adanya kesadaran masyarakat terhadap lingkungan hidup. Sebagai sebuah anugerah yang diberikan kepada Tuhan. Dari Tuhan kepada umat manusia, kesadaran ini, ya kesadaran ini semakin lama semakin besar. Ya itu adalah yang kedua. Nah yang ketiga, kita tidak bisa mengandalkan lagi dalam kondisi seperti ini. Kita tidak bisa mengandalkan lagi turis atau wisatawan mancanegara. Seperti tadi saya sampaikan dari data-data yang ada dari Kemen Parekraf bahwa ada decrease, ada penurunan turis wisatawan mancanegara dari 16 juta sekian pada tahun 2019 menjadi 4, kurang lebih sekitar 4 juta pada tahun 2020. Sementara turis nusantara, wisatawan Nusantara penurunannya hanya 29 persen, dari 200 sekian menjadi 108 Sorry, 198 juta. Artinya ini masih sudah menjadikan big market, ya big market untuk ya melakukan wisatawan Nusantara. Nah, yang paling penting apa yang dilak perlu dilakukan oleh pemerintah daerah atau pebisnis yang dilaksanakan di Bali, apalagi yang tadi disampaikan oleh uh, Dokter Mado Amerta bahwa pemerintah merencanakan. Ya, kalau tidak salah ingat ya Pak uh, pemerintah merencanakan untuk work from Bali. Nah ini adalah merupakan kesempatan, merupakan sebuah kesempatan yang sangat besar di Bali. Hanya satu catatan beberapa yang perlu mendapat perhatian adalah kontrol. Ya. Security of tourism cannot be only and not only from the government. Jadi tidak bisa hanya mengandalkan kontrol dari pemerintah, tapi kontrol dari masyarakat. Kita menggunakan konflik yang tahli. Ya. Ya, tidak ada. Ya. Tadi ada yang disampaikan oleh uh, Dr. Made tadi mengatakan bahwa ada wacana pemerintah ya untuk from Bali, itu adalah merupakan sebuah opportunity. Hanya kontrol yang perlu dilaksanakan baik oleh pemerintah, provinsi, pemerintah, daerah, dan juga tentu komunitas, ada akademisi, dan juga tentunya tidak um, kalah pentingnya adalah peran dari media. Sehingga saya meyakini melihat potensi yang sangat besar di Bali dan keterlibatan masyarakat di Bali, keterlibatan wisata yang sangat besar sekali, uh, model piknik metode panicking tersebut bisa diterapkan di Bali. Dan saya mengajak, saya mengajak kolega saya dari Universitas Barma Dewa, kita bersama-sama bikin joint reason. Bungus. Ya, ya. Thank you, Pak. Ya, thank you, Pak Prof. Ya, that was great. Ya, of course, um, after this one, we contact each other, we get in contact, we do collaboration, right together. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, well, um responding my question I, I, of course um uh, his model picnic without panic uh, could be in, directly implemented uh particularly in bali of course with a control uh, from all the stakeholders um especially uh from uh head for that um a health uh, uh, uh protocol um it's needed right so um uh, even in this pandemic COVID, but um this model again can be implemented in, in well ladies and gentlemen um uh i have 
one question now uh, from the participant. Um, the question um, uh, from uh, Monali Pareya. Monali, Miss Monali. Um, let me just read uh, directly. Uh, thank you for all of this extremely informative uh, presentation. I have a, a question for the panelists. Uh, I heard Dr. Aslap encourages that more tourism going for going forward has to be done through an agent. Will that restrict the number of free entrepreneurs who would individually want to take a, a, a class for looking around at the island? So uh, this is this question addressed to Dr. Rasa. Yeah. So uh, could, you, could you get the point? This is from Manali. Um, her question again. Um, yeah, you got the point. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Just, just, just uh, please um, respond directly. Thank you, Dr. Right. Thank yeah. you. Uh, yeah. So for the questions, I just uh, recap. I'll just repeat the questions. It's yeah. related to the uh, travel agency, which we uh, allow. Eh? We we ask the government to allow the uh, the people or the the people to travel. Okay. Uh, via a travel agency, right? Um, the um, the question is that uh, is it related to the um, personal or what? Or or the question is more on uh, travel agency? Again, um, think... yeah. Who would individually right. want to take quest for looking around the island? So understood. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yes, this, 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 this. I can see this this question maybe uh, from the perspective of uh, Bali tourism. Huh? So um, talking about the um, individual or agency, at the moment, it's allowable or it make it allowable for the agency, registered company, yeah? Because uh, it's, it, they have registered, they, they have the registered company, they know what to do, they have the networking. Instead of letting individuals to do the, um, you know, to bring people here and there, it's more dangerous as compared to a company, right? If you let the individuals bringing people uh, or, or to the to the places they are not registered. Okay? They are not registered. It, it is difficult for the Ministry of Health or the authority to trace the location where they go and so on. Okay, if you travel by individual, there's a possibility of they go to other places that not being planned. Right, as compared to the one if you uh, travel by travel agency, they need to really register. And if they're not registered, then they, they cheat. Okay, they cheat, they fake the uh, information that, uh, to the Ministry of Health, to the Ministry of Tourism, for example, they will be penalized, right? Compared to individual, how can we penalize to the individual? It's, it's, it's a bit difficult. So that's why at the moment, it's the best to allow registered and legal uh, travel agencies. So that's, that's what uh, I've been uh, suggested. Yes, now thank you for the question again. Yes, um, thank you, Dr. Laisla. Um, yeah, we respond. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, next question coming from um, Made. Uh, from this is from um, Pasak Mangku, from actually from Barmadi First City. Um, I just uh, read it uh, directly. Uh, directly. I have a question to Dr. Aslan and Dr. Sakir. This is um, this question addressed to Dr. Aslan and Dr. Sakir. Um, you have known that Bali is one of the provinces that very popular in the world, especially the tourism sector, but now the sector is pulled down or collapses due to COVID-19. The question is, what do you think? Does the tourism able as foundation development for Bali province and what we can do to recover the situation? So that's the point uh, to both speaker, Dr. Uh, Asrap and Dr. Sakir. Uh, what do you think? Uh, does tourism able, able as foundation development for Bali province and what we can do to recover the situation? Yes, probably you understand. Um, uh probably uh, also this question I mean like uh does the tourism uh 
could be used as the as the, 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 the a, a core development of, of Bali and what we can do to recover the situation, right? Um, Dr. Saker probably first. Yes, okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. Actually, the you know, with COVID-19, uh, there is many things uh, it become upside down. There is many practices, uh, many steps, many uh, managerial steps uh, become different. Like uh, they can use the, some protocols uh, to, to protect uh, at least uh, the areas uh, to make uh, our, or to keep, to save the, the numbers of uh, the tourism to the place or if you mention about the valley, there is some useful way uh, they have to arrange about the airlines protocols uh, they have to keep on the safety materials, uh, how to avoid to be, uh, to keep uh, a gap between the passengers, for example. Uh, even the capacity of the hotel's rooms uh, should be not, uh, during these days, uh, during COVID-19, should be not fully 100 capacity, maybe uh, at least we can run out by 60 or 70. This is in my opinion. And uh, like uh, the arrangement or the promotion programs uh, uh, should be more, uh, uh, what they call, more clearer than before. Yani, uh, even we use that transportation should not notice that uh, to taking care about the numbers of the travelers and uh, uh, try to avoid by way or either uh, to be close to each other uh, in the public places. Uh, uh, try to have a privacy more for the visitors. Try to uh, concerning in the safety matter during these days, actually. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I hope uh, Dr. Pasamanku. Right, that, um, your uh, explanation uh, in responding on this question. And um, I'd like directly invite Dr. Vasla to probably give some addition um, of the, the question given by Dr. Pasak Mangku. Thank you. The question is more on the, um, the effective strategies to build and develop ecotourism in Bali, which is specific to uh, Bali. Right, um, as... Um, as mentioned earlier, that uh, there already 5G in Den Pansa, if I'm not mistaken. Am I correct? I said 5G already there. Yeah? So we, we, uh, this is mentioned by, your, uh, by the, um, the uh, uh, device, uh, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, who mentioned then the 5G just now? Yeah? You have the 5G right in Den Pansa now already. So use this, utilize this 5G first to promote, okay? The, um, the areas okay, that you wish to promote, all right? For example, as I mentioned earlier, right? You first, you need to have a good policies. You need to prepare with, uh, with the, uh, the uh, standard of operating, we call it SOP, okay? In, uh, in order for people to come in to your place. Okay? Once you have a proper standard of procedure with the policies, with the strict rules and so on, then you can promote uh, to the people. First, you need to target to the nearest people. Who are they? They are the Indonesian, all right? So if you target uh, overseas, I mean the foreigners, it, it, it's as, it's super difficult right now because the uh, because of the border. You need to focus to the nearest person. Who are they? They are the Indonesian, the Balinese, for example, the people in Bali who come to your place. Okay, it's uh, you. You might need to reduce your price as low as you can. Yeah, because of what? It's better to have. Uh, some, then you lose everything. So that's that's how it works. So what you need to do is that first you you go back you you you, you apply all the policies the, the standard of procedure and uh, the standard of procedure of operating your business there, and then you need to promote using social media. And I believe last time I saw Luna Maya, they went to Bali and they they post it on on the Facebook on Instagram and so on. So that's how it works. Yeah, that's how it works. So show, uh, uh, let Luna Maya promote that uh, 
that place, right, a blind strict uh, standard of operating or strict rules so that people feel safe to come there. That's how it works as one of these strategies, which I believe there's a lot more strategies available down there. At the moment, that's what I think today. All right. So that's, uh, that's it from me. Thank you very much. I pass back to the um, tema there. Uh, thank you for the addition, um, Dr. Rasla. Uh, I hope Dr. Pastor uh, Mangku is satisfied of this. Oh, they actually did uh, uh, respond. Well, um, distinguished speaker, we have um, some more questions from the uh, participants. Um, let me read directly. Um, oh, this is from Neira. Uh, uh, let me ask one question to all great speakers. So this this uh, question addressed to all of you gentlemen. Um, could you please mention some effective strategies to build and develop the tourism in Bali? What something uh, do we have to prepare? Right, this is um, this question to all speakers. So who'd like to um, answer first? Prof. Uh, Tony, uh, 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 are still in, with, still with, it, with us? Prof. Tony? Yeah. Prof. Okay. Uh, Tony, um, I'm so sorry. Um, actually, okay. you have question <laughs> okay. from, from Bira. This is uh, to all of of, of the speaker actually, about he ask, she is asking uh, the effective strategies, this is the effective strategies to build and develop ecotourism in Bali and what should be prepared. All right, um, maybe Dr. Dr. Saker or Pak Agung Laka, uh, Dr. Saker, would you like yes. to yeah, respond first yeah. while waiting for this? Okay, uh, so this is actually, the, uh, okay. Uh, the, the first of all, uh, the from my opinion, from my experience as I work with the embassy for a long time, uh, sometimes we're facing problems with uh, restricted visas to the other countries. Yani if you, uh, you should first open the visas for, uh, let's say, many countries, at least to have more visitors, to have more people to, to discover the country, to, to, to enjoy the resources, the places in your country. Uh, you, you should be, uh, you should have some facilities for them. Like you have to improve your surface in the tourism side. Uh, you have to give them the feeling, even they pay money, but at the same time they can get surface. What I believe in Asia, it's really, uh, if you ask me to come again, I will be really very happy. The place is very nice to stay there. People very friendly, and the the the, the is and the, the the area it's very beautiful. The, you have the sea and you have the forest. You have the sources, many sources. It's really like a, it's heaven in the world. That's why a, you how to take care of it. You have to have some strategies. Some strategies, first of all, you should not restrict it all the countries for the visas. You have to re-study again uh, who can be in, who can yani, easily to get the visa or you can make it. I know there is some political issues sometimes affect the tourism in the, some countries. But if we look at it at, and from the open uh, mind, from the uh, to have more income to the countries, to support the country by economic, uh, economics. We should study this very well, actually. First, you have, you have to get more visitors. You have to uh, look at uh, focusing in the surface you give to the visitors, uh, the tourism side. Also, at the same time, you have to educate your uh, citizens, your people, how to take care of the like uh, natural resources in your country at the same time how to deal with others some cultures it's affected tourism in the country but 
I believe it's not difficult in Asia, especially in Indonesia, because the people very friendly, very honest, and they welcome the others. This is yeah. from my opinion. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Dr. Sakir, all right? Uh, and, so, and I'd like to invite um, Pak Goraka or Dr. Aslak to add. Um, so Pak Goraka probably would like to give um, also your thoughts to Mera asking the package strategies uh, to deploy the tourism in Bali. Pak Goraka? Or, okay, Dr. Asra. Uh, uh, later, I'd like to invite uh, Tony also. Dr. Asra, would you please um, uh, well respond to my last, my last question about the, the effective strategies and what to prepare in developing uh, ecotourism article in Bali? Thank you. Right, thank you. Um, talking about strategy, I think I already um, you know, gave the answer just now. I just I need to focus on the um, um, maybe uh, on how to you know uh, to prepare uh, you know, how to prepare uh, on to, uh, how to prepare this this thing right um, uh, number one what we need to do is that uh, you need to prepare the uh, the, uh, the, the, the what we call this as uh, the procedures as I mentioned just now yeah the procedures and then you need to prepare your staff okay that involve Okay, the staff that in charge, okay, at the at the um, business side, right? You need to prepare with the um, equipments. Right? What are the equipments? For example, the temperature scan, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, we call that the uh, the mask, the face shield if needed. So a lot of things you need to prepare. All right, show to them that you are well prepared, okay, with all the strict, all the restrictions, with all the policies. Okay, and again, all right. Once you prepare with these equipments, you prepare uh, with the with your uh, you prepare your staff, okay, mentally especially with how to entertain okay, people that coming from you don't know where okay, to your place. Okay, you don't know if they they bring any disease or not. So you need to prepare everything with the equipment and so on. And once you prepare, okay, you need to um, market it. You need to promote it. Show to the people that my place. All right, already prepared for everything. This is the the um, the, the um, what we call this the, the protocols. This is the uh, the standard operating procedures that we already um, prepared and show to the people. How to show it? You can be via video. You can be by photos. You have social media platforms available to promote. Okay, that your place is uh, readily or prepared with the standard operating procedure strict uh, or restrictions. Or the uh, with the policies and so on. So that's how you prepare right? in terms of equipment, in terms of being mental, with in terms of the preparedness of your staff that in charge okay, at your place. So that's it for me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Dr. Rasta. Um, next, uh, Prof. Tony would like to add a little bit, or Pak Agum, Prof. Tony, please. Uh, the the effective strategy and what to prepare in. Uh, just moment, please. Yeah. Uh, I just okay. invited uh, uh, Prop Tony. Prop Tony, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, Pak Agung, uh, just moment, please. Wait a moment. Yeah. Prop Tony, go, go ahead, okay. please. Let me uh, answer the, the simple answer. Yeah. yeah. The first must open the eight principle that I mentioned before. The principle of ecotourism. The second one, follow the government regulation. And the third, ya, yeah, tadi sudah disampaikan oleh uh, Dr. Uh, maaf tadi Dr. dari Malaysia ya. Ya. Nah, yang perlu dibuat itu adalah yang tadi saya sampaikan adalah studi kelayakan. Ya, apa misinya? What is the mission statement and goal setting? It is the first. And the second is resources inventory and analysis. Ya, antara lain bagaimana inventory, nature, environment, community, heritage, and tourism services. This is the second one. And the third, market analysis. 
Nah, di dalam markup analisis ini kita bisa menggunakan secondary data atau primary data. Apa produknya dan kompetitif juga yang akan ditawarkan kepada turis. Kemudian yang kelima adalah development plan. Tadi sudah disampaikan panjang lebar mengenai uh, prosedur dan lain sebagainya. Kemudian yang keenam adalah ecotourism product development. Nah ini mulailah kita melakukan pengembangan terhadap produk ecotourism, apakah itu culture dan lain sebagainya. Yang ketujuh itu adalah marketing strategi. Di dalam marketing strategi tersebut, kita tidak cukup hanya menggunakan marketing mix 4 player saja. Karena ini adalah tourism. Tourism adalah service industry yang memiliki karakteristik yang berbeda. Nah, di sinilah diperlukan kalau kita menggunakan literatur yang disampaikan oleh uh, bukunya di dalam Morrison, ya, marketing mix itu terdiri dari 8 P. Ya. Termasuk dalam marketing mix ter marketing strategik tersebut adalah bagaimana kita menyusun budget. Kemudian yang kedelapan adalah implementasi strategik. Dan the last one, the important one adalah kontrol. Hati-hati di dalam uh, ekotourism itu juga ada tantangan. Environmental challenges, ada economic, ada local culture tantangannya. Terutama di dalam environmental challenge. Ya, ada tempat destinasi yang sudah terkenal, very famous, pasti akan ada datang banyak wisatawan yang ada datang di situ. Nah, ini yang memungkin memunculkan nanti terciptanya kerusakan lingkungan hidup, sehingga carrying capacity itu menjadi hal yang sangat penting sekali. Ini adalah fungsi kontrol. Kemudian ekonomi challenge itu juga demikian. Ketika suatu destinasi yang berbasis eco wisata itu menjadi terkenal, akan masuk pebisnis. Nah, ketika pebisnis itu masuk, tidak menutup kemungkinan akan menyingkirkan masyarakat lingkungan di situ. Termasuk budayanya. Nah, itulah makanya di nomor ke-9 setelah melakukan implementasi strategi, kontrol itu sangat penting sekali. Ini beberapa tahapan ya, untuk membuat strategi di dalam melaksanakan pariwisata berbasis Yeah. yeah, thank you, Ronnie. All right, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, now I'd like to invite uh, Pak Gong Raku probably to add um, your thoughts to it. Mira's question. Go ahead, Pak Gong. Unmute first, please. Okay. Terima kasih, Pak Ade. Yeah. Uh, saya tertarik dengan strategi ya, apa strategi yang efektif untuk membangun pariwisata Bali. Apa harus kita persiapkan? Itu saya ingin memberikan uh, apa penjelasan atau jawaban sesuai dengan apa yang saya alami dalam konteks ya pembangunan pariwisata Bali yang konsentrasi pada eco uh, tourism. Nah, nah ini penting sekali di tengah-tengah kita di apa namanya itu dibelenggu oleh pandemi yang kita tidak tahu kapan akan berakhirnya. Tetapi kita sebagai bangsa, yaitu bangsa Indonesia, khususnya Bali, yaitu daerah Bali itu kadung sudah bergantung kepada pariwisata, dan nanti kita harus siapkan apa yang harus kita pilih, strategi ke depan, menunggu new normal kembali pariwisata itu bangkit. Sehingga kita saya arahkan bahwa ini saya konsentrasi pada ekowisata. Nah itu jawabannya apa? Nah, ini kita ada tiga hal yang penting kita harus pegang di tengah-tengah kita akan membangun pariwisata. Jangan arahnya budaya. Budaya itu sudah populer untuk Bali. Kita akan kehabisan ada beberapa hal ya. Budaya itu kita akan mengalami degradasi karena keteledoran kita tidak semualah punya kesadaran untuk bagaimana menjaga Bali ini agar tetap aman budayanya. Nah, kemudian konsentrasi sekarang. Ada tiga hal. Yeah. Uh, profesionalisme, integritas, yeah. dan daya saing. Ya, yeah. Profesionalisme dalam arti kita betul-betul kalau mengembangkan ekotourism itu, ya tidak semualah dalam arti ekotourism, ya ekowisata, ya desa wisata itu, bapaknya, desa wisata semua. Tetapi pilihan tidak ada. Karena ini pariwisata pilihan. Bagaimana dalam satu daerah itu membangun pariwisatanya 
ya dengan mengangkat betul-betul yang punya potensi untuk diangkat sebagai ekowisata yang punya daya saing yang punya daya saing itu namanya profesional dengan tetap manusianya sumber daya manusianya yang mengelola eko itu ya ekotourism itu betul-betul berintegritas ini yang dituntut sesungguhnya bagi orang Bali integritas jati diri orang Bali ekowisata itu akan hidup akan muncul dari nurani masyarakat Bali dari hati nurani uh, masyarakat Bali bila integritas orang Bali itu betul-betul dipertanggungjawabkan saya ini orang Bali yang terkenal dari kedatangan Belanda pertama tahun 19 apa nama itu 1597 ke Bali bagaimana mengapresiasi Bali Bali pulau surga itu tahun 1597 pertama disampaikan orang Bali lugu Ah, ya. bagaimana kita bisa mengembalikan daerah-daerah yang kita Sorry, pilih sebagai wisata pilihan? Ya. Nah, uh, eko wisata. Pak Agung, we got the point now because we have very limited time. So you just uh, explain you have three at least: professionalism, integrity, and competitiveness, ya. right? Ya, oke. Okay. Okay. So, saya saya untuk bersaing dengan negara lain. Ya. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I think, um, ya, yeah, it kembali. was thank you, uh, welcome. Paul Mira, oke. Okay. So um, uh, sorry for interrupting Pak Agung because um, again we have very limited time and since there are uh, many questions raised to the speaker today and ladies and gentlemen uh, next I'd like to um, read the question uh, from coming from Dr. Putu Suyatna. Few questions. Uh, first, could you please explain your experience about what was the most difficult is to develop ecotourism in Malaysia? And secondly, how about the local people participated on the ecotourism program? In, I think it's also in Malaysia. Um, to Dr. Raska, I'm is yours to uh, respond. Question from Bapak, Dr. Tutu Raska. Thank you. Uh, it's from Bapak Putu, yeah. Right. So uh, uh, the first question is uh, experience about what was the most difficulties to develop ecotourism in Malaysia. Uh, in Malaysia, all right. The, um, now we're talking about Malaysia, right? Talking about uh, ecotourism in Malaysia, right? We the the most difficult uh, the most difficult thing uh, to develop or to maintain the ecotourism in Malaysia is about the pricing, right? In Malaysia, yeah, in Malaysia, uh, eco pricing, right? In Malaysia, yeah, in Malaysia, uh, ecotourism is not really contribute to the economy or not i'm not saying 100% because of what because the ecotourism in malaysia the, the the operators of ecotourism in malaysia they having difficult in increasing the ticket fare or i can say the um, the price of the ticket to enter for example if you want to enter a, a forest okay the price is like 10 ringgit if you increase double okay for example you increase the price from 10 ringgit to 20 ringgit people will get you know somehow people will get angry why is so expensive Right, it's just a forest, something like that. So that is the most difficult thing because in Malaysia, the um, number one, okay, the tourism that contribute a lot is from the entertainment, theme park, right? Uh, what else? Um, all those theme parks. If you uh, if you know the theme parks that we have in Malaysia, we have like uh, Genting Highland, we have the Legoland. All those entertainment is the most contribute to the um, to the um, tourism sector. As compared to um, uh, what we call this ecotourism, okay, I'm not saying ecotourism is uh, is not good. I'm not. I'm saying that entertainment industry or entertainment uh, tourism is it's performing better than ecotourism in Malaysia. Okay, one of the reason is because of the the price of the ticket. Okay, uh, the the um the the, the um the, uh, what we call this uh, the operator. Okay, they're having difficult in increasing the price of the ticket. Okay, for example, you want to if you want to visit a cave, right? We have Gua Mulu, for example, a cave. Okay, if you want to enter uh, a cave, the price ticket is cheap. Okay, if the price of the ticket is cheap, how can the um, the um, operator of Gua Mulu of the cave, okay, can can upgrade? Okay, the facility there. That's what happened in Malaysia, right? Same goes to the forest, reserve forest, and so on. It's it's difficult for us to increase the price. Okay, once you increase the price, and then people like like going crazy why it's so expensive and so on they they have the um they, they 
they can pay for entertainment but when it comes to pay to the um uh ecotourism or the uh, uh or the uh, the forest provide uh, reserve forest provider the uh, cave what else uh a, a sanctuary and so on uh, they they feel like oh it must be cheap something like that so that's what the uh, the challenges that we have now right so um so say go to second questions local people participated in ecotourism program right um local people particip uh, participated in ecotourism program right um for me if you ask me about these local people first day you need to provide job opportunity to them right number two you provide local package I mean that you we provide package to the local people okay this is special price for the local people that's how you survive at the moment you cannot you cannot depend too much on the foreign you cannot too, depend too much on the uh, the tourist comes from you know far away from your place so the best way is try to target your local people give uh, best price give uh, you know the lowest price possible it's like a package okay just to promote your place it, it, like i mentioned it's better for you to have you know uh, some revenue than you have zero that's thank you very much wow Thank you, uh, Dr. Ashra, for answering question uh, given by Dr. Tutu. Sure. Um, gentlemen, um, the speakers, um, we have one more question. Actually, some more. I'd like to uh, read one more, one more question addressed to all of you. This question may be the question to all of the speakers. This is from Putu Adi Permana. Um, let me just read it directly. As we know that the central government of Indonesia already implemented the regulation for tourism known as CHSE, clean health, safety, environment. The purpose of this regulation was to prepare tourism accommodation like hotel and another destination to get tourist trust with the certificate of CHSE. So the question is, is there any other element that can support tourists? tourism revival beside the trust of the tourists? So who would like to... Um, start to answer, uh, answer this question. Um, well, the program of CHSE, SE, Red Train Health, Safety, Environment from the government. So what is other element needed to support the tourism revival besides only the trust of the tourists from the tourists? So um, Dr. Sakar, probably, please. Uh, okay, brother. Yeah. Uh, but they, they said about, uh, just to make it more clear, the question, please. I, I, I'm freezing. They're asking about what in the questions? Yeah, they, they, another element in supporting the tourism revival, to revive the tourism, uh, besides the trust of the tourists. And from the government, especially our government in Indonesia, they have program concerning on claim, uh, health safety and environment it's yeah. it called C C C C H S E. yeah okay. so what what are the element you think okay uh, actually yeah. the most important if we all knows about it uh, any strategy any strategy you want to blame blame this strategy in the uh, in the organization or in the governments must be supported by the a higher level or top level in the management. If there is no supporting from the government, I believe that uh, the, the sector or the tourism sector cannot be improving. Or cannot be uh, how to support by the government side? Should they have a control uh, uh, during the processing, during the services of the uh, tourism people uh, during the places wherever they should have some controls about uh, what uh, uh, Dr. Ashraf mentioned about uh, even the prices, uh, also even uh, uh, how regarding the safety or taking care of the places. This one without control, without uh, following up, without monitoring from the government side, uh, it's never be improving or never be developed. That's the most important, from my opinion. Yeah, th th uh, thank you, um, Dr. Sakir. Um, I'd like to invite uh, Tony or uh, Dr. Rasra. Would you please add the, the, the question? The, the, 
be another element beside uh, GS, the CHSE needed to yeah. revive the editor. Please, thank you. Thank you. Right, uh, question, yeah. Jadi, oh, oh, this is Prop uh, Tony, please, please. Uh, oh. Yeah, Prop Tony, please, please. Sorry, Dr. Lashrat, uh, hang on second, please. Prop Tony, please, time is yours. As, as, an, as I mentioned before, the responsibility of tourism cannot only be from the government. Jadi ini harus menjadi catatan kita bersama bahwa tanggung jawab keberlangsungan, keberlanjutan pariwisata tidak semata-mata menjadi tanggung jawab pemerintah saja, tapi juga ada elemen-elemen uh, yang lain, yaitu adalah community. Justru dalam community, dalam ekotourism itu, community memiliki peran yang besar di dalam melakukan kontrol terhadap keberlangsungan ekotourism di wilayahnya. Yang kedua, Uh, maaf, yang ketiga, selain government, community, dan juga media. Media memiliki kontrol juga terhadap uh, aktivitas yang ada di dalam tourism. Tidak kalah pentingnya juga akademisi, di dalam memberikan masukan-masukan dari hasil penelitian-penelitiannya, bagaimana mengelola ekotourism yang benar. Dan yang terakhir, ini yang juga kadang-kadang uh, bertentangan juga dengan prinsip-prinsip uh, di dalam ekotourism adalah bisnis. Ya, para pebisnis, para pebisnis juga harus memiliki tanggung jawab terhadap keberlangsungan dari destinasi pariwisata yang berbasis pada ekotourism. Seperti tadi yang saya sampaikan bahwa uh, masalah carrying capacity terutama di dalam pandemi COVID-19 ini masalah carrying capacity itu perlu menjadi perhatian yang sangat besar bagi para pebisnis dalam upaya untuk uh, apa itu dalam upaya untuk uh, aspek kesehatan di uh, nanti pandemi COVID-19 ini terima kasih Pak ya yeah, uh, thank you Prof Tony ya yeah. terima kasih Could you please add a little bit? Thank you. Um, so the question is that instead of trust, what are other factors? Yeah, 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 yeah. So please. That we can, you know, have yeah. in order to, 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 to make this happen. Yeah, right. yeah. Trust is number one, right? Number two, it is, it is in terms of pricing, right? In terms of pricing. So a good pricing, yeah, affordable pricing, I can say, right, can, can, increase the um, attention of people to go there, right? If you keep with the same price before COVID-19, yeah? So it's not going to happen, right? As I mentioned earlier, it's better for you to have something than nothing, yeah? It's better for you to have clients, to have, it's better for you to have customers that pay, at least you can survive or break even in your business. It's better than, than you lost everything. So um, instead of trust, What you need to do is in terms of pricing, all right? In terms of pricing. That's it. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Um, Dr. Lasla. Uh, Pak Gongraku, would you like to add a little bit? Pak Gongraku? Oh, I think, yeah. Okay, no, no, okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, actually we have uh, uh, three, three more minutes actually, or as the time was given by uh, the committee. Uh, to finish this um, session, right? question and uh, question. Um, actually, I read um, some more question uh, given uh, by the participant, but again, uh, so sorry, because uh, time is very limited or uh, probably um, I, I cannot uh, deliver the, the, this question directly to the speaker today. But uh, it probably um, the committee would uh, like to keep uh, to note the the the, all the, the uh, question, if possible. Probably, um, well, uh, later on after this uh, virtual uh, seminar, uh, we could um, well ask uh, the speaker right uh, after after the session. Um, well, to end this uh, session, I'd like to invite all speakers to give. Um, Conclusion or, or, or closing uh, statement, please. Um, first, I'd like to invite uh, Prof. Tony. Prof. Tony. Uh, okay. Sorry, Prof. Tony, yeah. 
would you please uh, get uh, your closing uh, statement to close this um, uh, session? Thank you. I hope that the pandemic COVID-19 will be end soon. The tourism industry will return. Itu adalah closing statement saya. Ah, okay. Saya berharap yeah. berakhir dan pariwisata kembali. Yeah. Thank you, Pak. Yeah, amen. Yeah, thank you, Pak Prof. Sony. Okay. Uh, next, uh, Dr. Sakir, please. Uh, I really appreciate uh, the chance you give me to be with all of you and uh, I would like to express my uh, thankful to all uh, the speakers, all the organizer and the uh, similar community and wish all for them all the success anytime and all the time. Yep. Thank you, Dr. Saga. Thank you very much. Uh, next, Dr. Asra, please. Um, thank you okay, for inviting me to be one of the speakers, okay, one of the uh, the great speakers that we have today, right? Thank you to the audience, to the participants as well, okay, for, for be with us to, until the end of the um, seminar. And um, last but not least, I hope that Bali can recover, uh, especially in this um, tourism sector, uh, very soon. Okay, thank you again. Yes, thank you, Dr. Asra. Uh, Pak Dr. Agung Raka, please. Terima kasih, Bapak Moderator. Saya singkat saja. Apa yang saya jelaskan tadi, simpulan saya berikan yaitu untuk membangun pariwisata Bali post pandemi ini kita selalu siap-siap dituntut integritas. Integritas orang Bali sebagai sumber dayanya, kemudian dari integritas itu akan melahirkan profesionalisme dalam hal menangani daya tarik wisata dan kemudian itu akan endingnya muaranya pada kemampuan berdaya saing lah apa yang kita itu ya itu yang kita penting ke depan persiapkan. Bagaimanapun juga kita harus siap bahwa pandemi ini suatu saat akan berakhir. Dari new normal ini kita manfaatkan untuk yang tiga, integritas, profesionalisme, dan berdaya saing global. Nah, demikian, terima kasih. Yeah. Thank, you. Dan... Thank you. Thank you, uh, Pak uh, Dr. Agung Raka. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, that's all our presentation and discussion session. Um, well, we would like to thank you very much again uh, especially to all the speakers who have given great presentation and so answer, um, answer uh, to the uh, participant who raised the question today. And also, um, good appreciation to all the participants. Um, thank you for your great attention. Until now, um, well, thank you, Matur Susumu. Still, we have Pak Ketua Yayasan, Bapak Rektor. Ibu Director, Sekretaris, Bapak Ibu sekalian, thank you for your attention again. Um, joining um, this session from the morning until now, actually, um, past then 1 p.m. Um, some conclusion that I uh, could underline uh, from this discussion first, of course, we all should be optimistic. Right. Um, yeah. There are why the opportunity to develop the ecotourism uh, development um, as an alternative uh, tourism in this uh, pandemic COVID nineteen. And the second one, in developing the ecotourism, uh, especially in Bali, Indonesia, we need to have um, effective strategy. Uh, covering on the SOP, especially health, straight health protocol and government regulation, uh, market analysis, uh, and promotion. And of course, uh, there are a lot to say, but again, uh, because the time is limited. Um, thank you again, very much again uh, for all your attention. Um, I do apologize um, during escorting or guiding this um, session, uh, I did um, some mistake. So, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Um, om Santi Santi Santi. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dr. Saker, 
Ya Dr. Sakir Siu. Dr. Asrap. Oh, this my brother. Thank you. Pak Agung Raka and Prof. Tony also. Prof. Tony. Prof. Tony, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, all yeah, participant. Uh, Agat Monali. Monali, Paraya. Thank you, Monali, for uh, joining us. Yeah. It's children now living in, from, from United States, living in Italy. And some others, of course, I cannot mention one by one. Okay, thank you again. Uh, I'll see you next time. Um, well, to Dr. Agung, uh, okay, um, well, the time is yours. Thank you. Uh, see you next time. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sunyasta, as moderator. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the presentation by the speakers. Thanks for the speakers and to all participants. Thank you very much for your attention and participation. We do apologize for any inconveniences happened during this seminar today. We do hope there will be a lot of benefit to all of us. Uh, before we leave, please open the camera. Maybe we will take a photo, yeah? Okay, Pak Dr. Sunyasta, please. Uh, take the photo. Okay. Hang on, hang on. Okay. Second, please. Hang on, hang on, yeah. hang on, hang on. Second, please. Smile, everybody. Next, please. This, 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 this moment, please. Yes, next slide. Next. Smile. Next, smile, please. Next, internet. <laughs> next, yeah. next. Okay, thank you. Already Google. I've taken okay. some. Thank okay, you. and all participants, you can join the Google Classroom for material and fill the form for the certificate. Thank you very much. Terima kasih. Matur suksma. Good heart always to you and see you later. Om Santi 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 Om. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Okay. Thank you. Uh, ya, yeah, Prof. Tony. Matur, matur nun, Prof. Tony. Terima kasih. Ya. Yeah. Rotoni, uh, Dr. Saker. Uh, <laughs> what, what time? Uh, you even have no breakfast this morning, right?